Oh man, we're back with the one and only, the most hated but the most loved at the same time, Charleston White, back on Say Cheese. How you doing? You you really think I'm the most hated? Nigga, I think I, I think it's a hate love relationship. Nigga, well, I ain't done nothing to now, motherfucker, for a motherfucker to I, hate me. Motherfucker might think, not like me. I think hate and love. You gotta hate somebody. You gotta love somebody to hate them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess that's how they do us celebrities. Yeah, they love us to hate us. Then, yeah, yeah. Because I mean. It, if you look online, there are people who saying they'll do certain things to you when they see you, but when they see you, they don't do it. So it's like, I think people hate you, and then when they really get to see you in person, it's not really the same energy. Yeah, yeah, I'm too little for people to want to, to, to hate me. I, yeah, I don't pose no threat to nobody, a little old bit of me. I also did want to talk to you about this. Uh, you're from Fort Worth. Um, I just put out an a article about Fort Worth being the fastest growing city in the country. Yeah, we supposed to surpass Dallas in like five to 10 years. Yes. Is that the Charleston White effect? Oh, uh, no, 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 no. Uh, we, we, started, we started moving up in the, in, in the rankings like, like seven, eight years ago. So I think like eight years ago, we moved up to like fifth to 16th. And then within one or two years, we moved to 15th. Uh, uh, this, this is a, this is a, a, a family oriented city. Uh, if you don't go to the hood, right? So if you don't go inside the loop, inside the inner cities, uh, this is where you would want to raise your families. Uh, th this is a, a great place uh, for a school, housing, uh, job-wise. Uh, you know, when, 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 the job, when the job crisis hit America, uh, 2006, 2007, uh, we really wasn't affected by jobs here. Uh, and then a big plus is this is a the, the Dallas Fort Worth metropolitan area. It's a it's a it's a felony friendly environment, right? So uh, the county the county hire felons. Uh, uh, Lockheed Martin hire felons. Uh, General Motors, Frito Lay. So so this is a, a, a felony friendly a climate where you can come down here, homie, and, and really change your life if that's what you want to do. Yeah, I mean a decade ago, you know, I mean, and it still goes by my worth. You know, Fort Worth didn't really have that, uh, the reputation that it has now as far as the economy. A lot of people were really scared of Fort Worth about a decade ago. Uh, well, Fort, Fort, Worth, Fort Worth, San Antonio, uh, Beaumont, uh, Galveston, uh, uh, those were gang-banging cities. Uh, Dallas and Houston really wasn't a gang-banging city. Uh, Fort Worth was a gang banging town. When gang banging came, uh, uh, they they incorporated it uh, and, and emulated it uh, almost like this was a baby California. Uh, San Antonio was the same way. Uh, Beaumont, Texas, uh, uh, Galveston, Texas. Yeah, they they were gang banging hard, homie. So that that really hit this state hard. So it, it did develop the the name Fort Worth. Uh, but but once they started. Uh, countering the, the, the gang violence and, and, and the gang activities with, with police forces like weed and seed. Uh, they, they developed a, a zero tolerance, uh, a mindset, uh, not just in the police department, uh, as well as in the court systems around here. So, so uh, while they was calling this murder worth, there was a lot of young niggas getting 99 years for murder. Uh, mm. Under under a law where they can get out in thirty or forty years, uh, there was a lot of niggas getting uh, life with parole where they have to do forty at, at fifteen and sixteen. There was a lot of niggas getting certified and tried as adults at fourteen and fifteen when this was hard work. Uh, and 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 what happened to this city, homie? This was this is an agriculture state. This is a working town. Uh, this was a town full of hustlers. Uh, this was a big town full of hustlers, gamblers. So when gang banging showed up. The kids took to the streets, and 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 that's when the dynamics of the city changed. Because prior to gang banging, no one sold dope in the community. Everybody sold dope from a business, from a from a tire shop, uh, a, a mechanic shop, a laundromat, uh, a pool hall. They t they brought the dope and the street activities away from the women, children, and old people. Once the gang banging came. Now they brought it to the neighborhood. Now you got the trap houses, niggas hanging out in the front yard, hustling and f up the neighborhood. So uh, is it worth now? It, it, 
it, it's nothing like 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 what it was. We seen a three or four year span of of, of young kids like J Dub, uh, uh, Go Yeah Yo Nim. You know, we seen a a, a spurt of violence. Uh, but homie, I was in the schools. I was in the juvenile systems, uh, combating that violence. I was in the city council meetings every week, uh, com combating that violence, as well as fighting in the community because they supported the violence. They supported the go yeah yos. They they love little J Dub them. So uh, I was squabbling with the clubs who were letting them get get in with the guns. So uh, it, it's a difference now. Uh, the, the the police department uh, now has a, a, a VIP program that's similar to the one. That, that, that was developed in California years ago. It's a violent intervention program where they use formerly uh, incarcerated men, former gang members uh, who once and still have a little weight in the streets uh, who can show up at murder scenes uh, and talk to both sides. Uh, so they got a lot of funding for that now. So we are seeing things change because we are seeing more uh, youth engagement programs, youth development programs, uh, not, not just in the community, but at the middle schools and high school levels too. So I think more people in this city, in, in, in this in, in this area, are, are now trying to focus more uh, on the youth violence uh, overall than just gun violence. I mean, Fort Worth is the gang capital of Texas, but how like how much has it changed drastically? Do you, can, do you notice a change in Fort Worth, the culture now? Uh, yeah, yeah, these niggas ain't gang banging no more. Uh, uh, these, these niggas is these niggas is rap banging, uh, mm. click click banging, uh, because in, in most of the little rap clicks. You, you got what the police call a hybrid gang, right? So you got hybrid gangs. You got Crips and Bloods that make up this one clique, and they gang gang. Uh, mm. uh, you, you, got, you got kids who, who became Crip because their daddy was a Blood, and their daddy was a big-time Blood. So part of their rebellion is to go uh, become opposite of what their daddy became. Then you got a lot of kids who, who, who fathers who, who got big names, and, and, and they feel an obligation to, to fill those shoes. Uh, what's, what's changed about Fort Worth now is, uh, if a kid get caught with a gun now, they're not gonna let him out till he tell where he got that gun from, or where the gun is now. If they know, if, if Judge Alex Kim know he got a gun, uh, what's changed about Fort Worth now is, uh, these niggas scared a gang unit more than what, uh, uh, gang unit is the only ones can make these niggas get naked in the streets. Take your shirt off, turn around, let me take pictures, throw up your signs. Uh, what's different now is, uh, is babies. Is 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 babies that's 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 being allowed to to come out and play in the streets. Uh, when we started coming. We really had teenager guys who was who was misleading us. So our OGs, so when we were 14, 15, homie, our OGs was 18, 19. Them niggas still kids they sell. Uh you had the the, the 21 year old niggas who thought you put the young nigga in the spot, uh, you give him 500 heroin pills. You you give him you give him a a, a hunter slab of dope and he make 20 off every hundred. So uh that's when it changed. So they were putting dope in our hands, homie, to, to sell and make money. Now what we're seeing is uh, somebody's putting guns in children's hands. And, 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 and I know how we got guns. We broke in the houses. We find us a corner house with a boat, and, and we broke in the houses. That's typically how we got guns as, as a kid. Uh, but, but these kids here are getting military-type guns, homie. That's what's different. Uh, the, the, the level of culpability, the level of understanding, uh, the, 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 the lack, the, the ability to really understand consequences, uh, that's scary. The internet makes it different. Uh, you can create an enemy just surfing the internet, and now you got to opt now. Mm -hmm. uh, just by being on the internet, you don't even know them. You, you, now yep. you got to opt just from waking up, logging on the internet. Whereas you would have to go out. You you you, you had to. You see, you see what I'm saying? So, yeah. but most importantly, what's different is, uh, this is an illiterate group. I'm gonna say it again. This this is an illiterate group. Uh, only 36. 
Only 36% of children in the Fort Worth Independent School District can read on or above their grade level. I'm not gonna name the school, but nigga, there's a school nigga where the ninth grade down there, all them niggas in special ed. What's this, high school? Yeah. Damn right. I ain't go, I ain't go, I ain't gonna do them people like that. <laughs> but damn right, all the ninth grade in special ed, my nigga. Uh this group is illiterate. Uh, this group here struggles with, with, with not just reading, but reading comprehension. So in, in order for you to uh, spell words like L-M-K or L-M-F-A-O, hmm. uh, 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 what, what's that other one? They spell hell. E oh, oh, as hell, A-S-L. Yeah, so, so in order for you to rewire your brain chicago started that though but 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 they can't read in chicago neither them niggas dumb in the motherfucker up there them babies in chicago dumb in the motherfucker you hear how they rap that's where mumbling rapping come from that's where mumbling rapping come from nigga mumbling can't pronounce words don't know what them words is so lack of education is what you see in the hip-hop community because the hip-hop community don't value education or uh, if a nigga can play basketball, nigga, he don't value education enough to go get the education, then go to the league. So they can't read, they can count, they lack reading comprehension. And there's nothing in, there's nothing in schools or there's nothing really at home to help this group of gangsters or this group of gangbangers help them with their critical thinking skills. Uh, that's why most of their crimes are so brazen. They're not, a, they can't critically think. That's why you see a 10 year old little boy get bullied with a bag of chips and go straight to the car and come out and shoot a gun immediately. Start shooting people, he can't critically think. There's nothing in our society right now that's developing critical thinking skills. There's the, there's nothing in the black community, there's nothing in the hip hop community, my nigga, that, that, that helps a nigga understand when he reads something, how to read to comprehend. That's why folks argue over post. That's why we're so, that's why this group of people seem like they can't understand nothing and they can't get along with nothing because they lack the ability to comprehend. So this is the group that has to, this is the group that says uh, you have to be to work tomorrow at nine o'clock, you get off at six o'clock, you off on Fridays and Saturdays, you get two, this is the group you tell how to, they can't think outside the box. So they don't know that anger is a natural emotion. They don't know it's all right to get mad. It's what you do when you get mad, right? So some niggas soon they get mad, homie, they initial thought is to hurt you. Whether that's their sister, the, the supervisor at work, their initial thought is to hurt you. They don't have the abilities and the skill to think away from hurting somebody, to weigh the cost and the benefits, to say, okay, well maybe they don't have that ability, homie. So until their brain develop, this group of, of gangsters or this group of gangbangers, uh, they the planet of the apes when the apes got the guns. They the monkeys with the guns. They the monkeys with the guns and a lot of people go die. So uh, lack of education, lack of education, homies, what's different now. We had some sort of education. That's why when them niggas come back from prison, they can speak Arabic. Asalaamu Alaikum, my brother. They can speak Hebrew language. Uh, they can go down there and read about black people was the real Jews 50,000 years ago. This group here, you got to tell them about that. They ain't gonna be able to read it. The Book of Eli. Go back and watch the movie, The Book of Eli. This, that group, sitting on side the road, behind a car, broke down car, ready to jump out and attack. Hmm. This, that group. And hey, they don't on. know nothing about picking up a book. But before we move on, I want to go back to Fort Worth for a minute. You 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 repeatedly said that Stop Six wasn't always hood. 
Um, well, what was the first hood in Fort Worth? Was it Eastwood? Was it Southside? Was it uh, um, uh, S- uh, Como, Como, Southside, and Stop Six? Uh, was the three predominantly black neighborhoods uh, in, in Fort Worth, Texas, and these were prominent prominent communities. Uh, the projects up until the '90s have always produced the brightest students at schools. Uh, the project children have always been manable up until the crack epidemic. Those was always the best performing, brightest students in class was the project children. The kids who had to walk to school through the mud. Uh, those were always your shining stars in class. It wasn't until the 90s uh, where we thought being dumb was cool. Uh, stop six gets his name because it was the sixth stop, the last stop where black people could get off on the bus. Uh, Eastwood was a community where people had gardens in the backyard. They got big, big backyards. You see ranches in Eastwood, so that's more country. That's the country where you walk through Eastwood. You used to could just eat off the trees. You got pears. You just could eat off the trees. Uh, they had gardens. People still own their homes over there. Uh, uh, Stop Six, Bunch Park, uh, Amanda, uh, Style Cup. They had prominent black businesses. Uh, in, in, in Stop Six up until the, the 80s, the 90s. Uh, downtown, Fort Worth, uh, they had a black section in downtown, Jones Street, uh, 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 well, 9th Street, one of them, 6th Street. Home, they had dentist offices. They, they had black businesses down there, black movie theaters. Uh, same with Como. Uh, Southside, homie, you had Dr. Brooks. Uh, you had black, a black dentist office. So uh, this was a prominent town, homie. Uh, it was affected by heroin uh, during the 40s and the 50s and the 60s, just like New York was. So it was a big heroin epidemic that came, uh, but it's always been a working town. Uh, and Fort Worth is a military town, it's a fort. We have a military base here. Uh, the Mint is here, where they make money. Uh, we got nuclear plants right outside of here. So there's always have been a, 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 a military town. So when gangbanging showed up, uh, there was always a fascination with California. Uh, motherfucker come through the South with California plates, damn near can get his dick sucked at every house, he stopped it. Because we were fascinated <laughs> with, the, with the Hollywood. <laughs> so uh, when they showed us colors, when they showed us colors and they commercialized it, uh, it, it, it set like a wild, wildfire. But if you go back and, 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 and watch the movie, uh, watch, uh, that shit with the with the crack uh, snowfall, it show you how gang banging came down here. They didn't bring gang banging down here to teach us gang banging. Them niggas brought crack, and we just picked up on the gang banging because we were fascinated and 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 and, and, and it was impressionable. It was impressionable. Uh, the camaraderie. Uh, the 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 false sense of, of of love amongst brothers, the brotherly love. Uh, it played on a bunch of young boys because what I realized is uh, boys join gangs. Men don't. Men don't. Yeah, when, when a man realized uh, he, got to, he got to be with other men, uh, most men will run from that mindset. Waking up every day have to be with another man. Uh, my loyalty have to be to this man and all these other men, and 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 none of us, uh, and none of us are really loyal to what we claim we're loyal to. You said that before about rappers. You said rappers don't put uh, women in their music videos no more. It's an entourage of twenty guys. They don't have them on stage. They don't have the women on stage uh, uh, dancing in front of them, shaking. Uh, with, a, with, a, with a little with a little dance routine. Uh, when, when you when you look on their social media pages, uh, you don't never see you don't never see them with no girls. Uh, if you look on their live videos, uh, you don't never hear them with a girl in the background. Uh, you never see these niggas with girls. It's always it's it's niggas grouped up every day. Boys following boys. Uh, it's been like that since 1981. Uh, you leave out a house with mama, cause ain't no man in the house. Nigga leave out a mama house, what he do? Go get with a bunch of boys. Hmm. And he do that almost until the day he die. From in elementary school, 
When he get to middle school, what he do, nigga? He get with a bunch of boys. Nigga, if you got five niggas together, one nigga got a girl. Rest of the niggas ain't got no girl, especially in high school. Hmm. You very seldom see a clique of niggas and everybody got a girl. Wait, why, why 1981? Why that year specifically? Uh, be, because... Because during the seventies you had a lot of teenage you had a lot of teenage women that was getting pregnant. See in the seventies they had to you gotta think in the seventies, homie, they got the hippie era. Yep. So nigga, they got they got the hippie era, uh, and they fucking with that LSD. Uh I think ecstasy started becoming big in the seventies and the eighties. So nigga, dad and them fing like a motherfucker. Dad and them mama's boys. See, you gotta realize, nigga, dad and them coming from a household with mama and daddy. We the first one with our daddy. So, nigga, we show up with our daddy and them. But daddy, daddy and them just laying dick, homie. The before us, them, them niggas before us, nigga, our daddy and them, nigga, they was some sorry niggas. They just, they just want to feel good. That's why so many of them went dope fiend. Because they want to feel good. Most niggas coming from the Vietnam War, they fucked up. Uh, most niggas struggling with the blue collar job financially. So, nigga, all the shit in the community like they got now make them feel good. So now, uh, they give the woman, they give the woman all the benefits. So that's why a lot of niggas in the 70s developed a pimp mindset. That's why you got the black exploitation era. Nigga lay up on the woman. She getting all the benefits. They still mad about the man, getting back at the man. So this their way to get back at the man. But while they getting back at the man, they being irresponsible with their dick. That's why most daddies, nigga, got a baby over here, a baby over there, and them niggas just easily walked away from their children. It's just that when they showed back up, the woman was stronger than him. Most niggas who walked away from the baby, when he come back to try to get in her life, she a little stronger than him. She got a stable place to stay. She got some food in the icebox. He been jiggaloing. He been jiggaloing with that dick. Getting clean every day. Got that afro looking good. Fucking everything around him. So who we come along, my nigga? Dad and them were mama's boys. Some of them got put out and had to learn the hard way. Who we come along, nigga, mama's boys. Most of us, most nigga couldn't even go in the streets. They mama saying, you stay right here in the yard. So when we was able to leave mama's yard, we don't know nothing. What can mama tell us in this house when we go outside and play with these boys? Because in the house, most mamas are saying, say please, thank you, share. Most mamas making you share your stuff. So when you go outside, mama telling you to be cordial to these little boys. Why y'all playing marbles? In his household, he getting beat. So he like to fight. Mm. He a bully. The other one, he a bully, but he's scary, but he playing like a bully. He still. This one here don't like nothing but playing like he like everything. He using everybody. So mm. when you go out there, what can your mama tell you to fit in when y'all playing marbles and y'all have a disagreement with this little boy? Mama say come in the house and tell it if he take them marbles. She, she can't tell you how to get them marbles back from him. Every time you go outside, every time you get something new, you leave it outside with your friends and they come up missing. Your mama buying you toys. Your mama, they mama them ain't buying them toys. So they not telling you your friend is the one stealing your toys. Because he really jealous of you. And he spent a night at your house. And he grew up with this jealousy all the way up to high school, but all y'all living these projects together. Damn. Your mama teaching you manners. So, but you living in an environment, nigga, where everybody's not manable. So, when we leave our mother's house and we go outside to play, who do we knocking on? Another little boy, though. Can Jimmy come outside and play? Then after Jimmy, we go get Ray Ray. We don't think, we ain't fucking with no girls. By the time we get to middle school, we playing football, we like girls. But, nigga, we congregating together as boys. One nigga might ease away to go talk to a girl, but by now, we shaming each other for liking a girl. Oh, man, he always, oh, he look, nigga, this is the time, yeah. <laughs> oh, his heart broke. Oh, man, nigga, this is the time. You going through your adolescent stage. Then when you get to high school, niggas really grouped up in high school. Niggas in about eight to ten, niggas normally eight to ten niggas in high school. That's your little clique. At that eight to ten niggas, 
maybe three of them getting bronze. Rest of them hang alone. Trying to turn the freaks into their main girl. The bra that we flipping. Them the <laughs> nigga coming back. Yeah, yeah, saying you ain't got to do this. Yeah, you ain't got to do this. Sliding the rub off and getting her pregnant. I know a few of them. Come on now. <laughs> yeah, them fucked up everything. Now they go together. Uh, yeah, now we can't flip her no more. So, uh, so think of so when you get to college, it's the same thing. It's a group of niggas pr- praying on a handful of girls. So from 1981 to now, in the black community, it's been boys following boys because ain't no nigga following no man. What mm. man we got? What man done showed us how to be a man? Everything we done learned from a nigga, we learned from a nigga five to ten years old than us. He don't really know much. And he don't have nothing to show for what he know. He just talking and it sounds good in the motherfucker because he got a reputation, but he don't have nothing to show for what he know. Our last interview did pretty damn well. Almost had a million views three weeks ago. Uh, a lot of mixed reviews about it. Um, yeah, they mad. Thir- they mad because I'm fucking with that Dion boy. Yeah, they- yeah. We had a we had a 30 minute segment strictly about Dion, and since then they lost two. Um, well, no, they lost three. Yeah, they lost three. They some losing motherfuckers right now. Yeah, they they they're one in three since the interview, and uh, they had a 29 point lead the other night and, and lost that one too to a one in five. To Stanford, one in f- via a bunch of yep, slow, flat footed yep. white boys. Yeah, all them white boys were slow and flat footed. Uh, yeah, how they they how they lose to Stanford? Underestimated them. Yeah, yeah, really. He he. Now uh, everybody is overestimating Dion. Dion need to go back to little league. He was a great little league coach. Boy was a great little league coach. But now nah, he 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 now nah, he ain't ready for the big league. He ain't ready for that. He ain't ready for that. And they talking about give him three to five more years. They don't say that for the white boys. White boy got to start winning immediately. Hmm. They don't say that for the white man. When a white man get the job, they don't say, well, give him two, three more euro. No, it starts now, nigga. Why we got to give you three to five euro, black man? Because you can't coach as good as the, you can't. Why? You brought who you want to brought. You opened up the portal, whatever portal you can open up. And y'all got plenty of money. Y'all got plenty of money. I think a lot, I think a lot of the potential players who were going to go there who – our five-star recruits, they're really waiting to see how Colorado would have did this year. That's why people are saying next year. Cause a lot of a lot of a lot of parents were iffy on sending their kids to Colorado. They should be. Because uh if they ain't let, let me tell you something. Uh they need a white quarterback. I'm just gonna say it right now. They need a white quarterback. Put that ball over there and running back a wide receiver. But but no good white man that's involved in his son's life go send us over their son to be coached by Deion Sanders with a, with a black quarterback. It's all about the black quarterback, him and his dad. It ain't about the other players. They don't even mention the other players. It's all about Deion and his boy. It's all what it's about because, because him and his boy are celebrities, right? So that's the catch. That the, see, the catching come before the hanging. They catching these kids because the celebrities is coming here. But boy, what if goddamn me Atlanta Falcons offer Deion Sanders a job and, and, and they draft his son? He leaving Colorado. So I'm telling everybody, listen, there's some coaches that's going to be around, they're going to stay around. They don't have no aspiration to go coach in, in, in the NFL. Them the coaches you want to go play for. You, you want to go play for, for, for a coach that, that, that's not built around nepotism, my son. It's all right to, it's all right to, you know, uh, put your son. But no, nah, man, we ain't going to play family ball. Dion recently said that he wouldn't coach in the NFL because it's hard to motivate men who are making millions. Uh, he also said he'll come to Atlanta if they if he get his boy. Dion just be talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's hard to coach them young niggas in college. Fuck is you talking about? It's hard to coach, coach them niggas. You know how hard it was for them to coach them little league motherfuckers and not fuck their mamas and fight their daddies? Uh, <laughs> nigga, please. Them men, please. Boy, them hoes, man, please. Dion could have been king in the motherfucking little league world. Fuck all the mamas 
Uh, all the daddies want to come. Yeah, man, he could have he stayed down here and been king. Uh, he will not be king in college football nor the NFL. Cause boy, they got some good white boys that can coach some niggas up there. Nick Saban's one of them. I love that man. Uh, see, uh, I just ain't seen no nigga that can coach a whole bunch of niggas. Or I ain't seen no nigga that can coach some white boys mixed with some niggas. Name me one good coach that's black. That don't. Uh, well, in college? In college, anywhere. High school, anywhere. I mean, it's good black coaches everywhere. I'm, I'm saying, but you're right. But this is what I'm saying. That can coach them in the championships. A bunch of black kids with white kids. Or all black kids. Or black coach with all white kids. Where are they coaching them kind of people into the championship? They don't exist. All championship rings and, and, and awards been won by white coaches. Black coaches don't fare well in championship game. It's been proven. <laughs> Yo, let me Google this shit. Nigga, Google it then. I ain't lying. Just making shit up. It's a few black coaches, though. I, uh, they don't win championship game. They can't coach championship players. Name Mike me. Tomlin for the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. Let me see. He won him one championship, didn't he? I think so, yeah, against uh, the, was it uh, Arizona? Yeah, being Rosselberger won that championship. That nigga didn't win that. <laughs> Yo, do you watch the Colorado games or you just wait to, you just wait uh, for him to lose? Now, if anybody watch my social, uh, I wait for him to lose. But if anybody watch my social media platform, I be at Little League football games. Why y'all watching Deion Sanders and them grown ass kids? Half of them ain't going to the league. Uh, most of them, uh, you know, I, I, I be I be at the little league game, homie, hooping and hollering with the kids. I don't watch no bunch of grown niggas tackling each other, ramming, running to each other. Uh, yeah, yeah, and football ain't a gladiator sport no more. They don't let them hurt each other like they used to, and niggas ain't trying to hurt each other no more. Tom Brady just said that he says more like flag football now. It is. It's a. It's a. It's a. It's a. Sport. Can you yeah, just bleep it? But yes, yeah, it's a sport. Ever since they let Michael Sam come in that motherfucker and kiss that motherfucking Asian boy during the draft, the NFL been fucked up ever since. It's been fucked up ever since. They need to draft Michael Sam back where the motherfucker done got. They need more yeah. openly gay NFL players to come out to really uh, brand that league because it's too soft now. And we know it's a bunch of gay niggas in that league too. Deion's wife spoke out. As well, after you uh, said what you said about, that's, this, that's, about our son. That's his ex-wife. Yeah, that bitch. That's his his ex-wife. Ex yeah, his ex-wife. Yeah, ex-wife. Uh, yeah, yeah, she shouldn't have said nothing. Yeah, woman ain't supposed to say nothing to the man. The boy got a coach. He got a daddy. He got uncles. He got teammates. He got everything. Sit down somewhere and shut up and let the man handle this. Wait, even if you mention their kids, though? Yeah, bitch, you, that's what the daddy them for. Man, don't say nothing to that man. Women ain't supposed to say nothing to the man, any ignorant. What you go get all of you? So we got to crash out over you because you done said something to her? If we ignoring him, fuck you saying something for. Well, that's my baby. Man, shut up. Don't you say nothing. Don't you say nothing. Because he go say something back disrespectful. Now, when my boy see him, my boy go feel compelled to have to defend his mama's honor and fuck up his football career. He go put my son in jail when he jump on the boy. For, see what I'm talking about? Don't say nothing, my nigga. Don't say nothing, baby. Don't say nothing, bitch. Shut up. Women ain't supposed to dress men. You go get your brothers and your cousins. You don't say nothing to the man. And that's the problem in the black community. Mama go run out on the field. Boy go be in high school getting into it with another grown. No, nah, man, that boy grown. Women are not suppo supposed to defend no man's honor up against no another man. Even if it's her son. That's why, he emas that's why she go keep him emasculated. That's why she'll let him sit down and pee till he realize he wrong with a motherfucker for sitting down peeing. That's why she'll let him play in, in the high, in, in her high heels. No, nah, you don't say nothing, mama. I know that's your boy, but bitch, shut up. That's why you can't keep no man. That's why every nigga you get done left you. You don't know when to be quiet. Uh, and for the most part, nigga, I'm bullshitting. You think I'm going to give a motherfucker $20,000? I don't know. Hey, I'm the nigga that hurt him. 
I'm going to really give a motherfucker $20,000. They really think I'm gonna really, I really got $20,000. Nigga, I'm gonna go buy more guns. I'm gonna go buy a bad ass watch. You really think I'm gonna give 20, come on now. They really, I'm not rich where I'm gonna give a nigga $20,000. I don't even watch football. They really think that, they, come on now. So if, if the daddy don't say nothing, the best thing to do, man, let that fool talk. Ignore that fool. He talking like a fool. I was out of town. And uh, I forget I forget what city I was in. And a valet driver had walked up to me, and they were like, "Charleston talked all that shit about Dion going to Colorado, but Charleston was about to do a streaming deal with Aiden Ross, but never gave a black streamer any clout." So uh, they're basically saying you're doing this. You was about to do the same thing Dion did. Uh, I didn't even know nothing about streaming, nigga. Till that white boy came and got me. I ain't know nothing about streaming. I didn't even know nothing about Aiden Ross. Till he came and whispered in my ear, hey, you want to stream? Didn't no nigga say, say, man, they make a lot of money streaming. Didn't no nigga tell me that. Didn't no nigga tell me that. So, uh, I'm not on here for black people, nigga. Uh, I never said Dion was wrong. I said black people was wrong. If you go back and watch the interview, nigga, I said Dion done what he was supposed to do as a family man. He not wrong. Black people wrong for rallying behind Dion. That's what I said. Yeah, but it, it just seems like, it just kind of seems like you're wishing on Dion's downfall to a lot of people. I like am. Rooting on, rooting on him to lose. I am. What's wrong with that? People root against LeBron James to lose all the time. All the time. <laughs> man, people, man, it's people that root for the Cowboys to lose, Dak Prescott to lose, get benched, get fired every Sunday. Why I can't root against Dion? I don't like a nigga with a white boy's jaw, playing like nigga, and niggas is happy. I don't nigga Calvin working at McDonald's. Nigga, niggas happy in the neighborhood Calvin got a job. Everybody waving at Calvin. Nigga, so what's wrong with me rooting for Dion to lose? I want him to run back over here to the niggas. I'm wishing he lose like a motherfucker with them white folks. And they get rid of him. Kick him back down here with the niggas. This where he belong. What's wrong with me wishing that for? Because you, you pro-black. I ain't pro-black. I ain't never said I was pro black. Pro nigga. I I'm forgot. pro nigga. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, yeah, I'm with these niggas. And nigga black ain't us. So now nah, my nigga, uh, they wasn't saying nothing when they were when they were rooting for, for these rap. They, they root for rappers to kill each other. Why I can't root for a coach to not succeed in a white man's world? Got you. Why? Who offended by me not liking Dion? Kwame Brown. Man, that nigga better <laughs> shut up. That nigga, man, that bitch ass nigga better shut up. Because this is what I'm telling everybody that don't like me for what I say. They can't match what I do in real life. Let me come on the internet and play like I don't like Dion. I'm going to say it again. Let me come on the internet and play like I don't like Dion, nigga. Nigga, when Dion Sanders was going through what he was going through, nigga, I was being, we was back and forward. Praying for you, coach, when he was losing that toe. Nigga, uh, when they played against TCU, uh, Mr. Carraway, former mayor of Dallas, homie, I was supposed to have been there out. With Carraway fucking with Dion. But nigga, everybody go right, I go left. And my message is, ain't nobody still show no love to the HBCUs, nigga. Mm. Why y'all mad about what I'm saying with Dion? We still don't know one black player playing in the HBCU. We can't name one black coach or who's winning in the HBCU that we can rally behind. Nigga, I'm playing like I don't like Dion. I don't watch sports, my nigga. Kwame Brown had a lot to say. It was. 
It was personal. It was like, I, I guess y'all met each other before. Man, you know, uh, I was po uh, Kwame Brown was going to be going through the HBCUs with me. So his manager then was pimping on him, uh, uh, Angela Staten King. So he was going to get with me. And we was going to do community work together because they was kicking his ass about all the talking that he's doing online with no community work. He does a lot of talking online, but he has no evidence of doing no community work. So his manager got with me. Uh, they flew me to Atlanta. Uh, I did the Angela Staten King show. Uh, I, they never would let me and him get together. So they treat that nigga like a puppy dog. So the broad always sat in the middle. So I saw that the nigga wasn't no stand up nigga. So I cut him loose. The nigga was kicking his ass on the internet, homie. He too motherfucking big and, and, and tall to be that weak. So I let the nigga go, homie. So I tried to say the nigga image. Oh, uh, I, I tried to say the nigga image, homie. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, nah, I tried to say that nigga image. So uh, I ain't heard from the nigga in a year. Soon in my YouTube channel get deleted, this bitch ass nigga talking like a motherfucker. But this is what I'm telling him. Homie, you do a lot of talking. Why was you so quiet in the league? You got bullied your whole motherfucking career. Picked on. Michael Jordan called that nigga a flaming fucking f This is documented in news headline. A flaming fucking f These words were used in the early 2000s. Do you know how brutal those words are back then? Like right now, it's, you know. But back then, to be called a flaming fucking you don't fight back with Jordan. Me and everybody picking on you. Now you want to pick on me because I ain't on a YouTube channel. Uh, I tried to help him, but he didn't do no community work with me. So he mad. Uh, I heard him call me a fake community activist. Uh, one thing about it, homie, uh, it's documented who I am uh, and what I do uh, in real life. And there's no documentation of a nigga ever calling me no fucking flaming and he ain't get hit across his goddamn head with something oh he got to kick my ass yeah yeah nah nigga so you can't get bullied long with this nigga been getting bullied and now you tough on the internet because you tall with big feet and small hands like they said on the nba on what the espn report said the boy got small hands he could never catch the ball big clumsy feet uh nigga average two points a game uh, nigga, I'm a superstar in real life. Nigga, you flopped in the NBA. You can't talk now, my nigga. And from what we saw with your financial records, you done filed for bankruptcy. Uh, you didn't do too well with the money, nigga. So now you sitting back getting a motherfucking YouTube check talking like that and you done been drafted by Michael Jordan. Boy, sit down somewhere. I bet he don't want to fight like you and that boy fought in that rain. <laughs> yeah, I bet that big old bitch don't want to fight, son. Uh, your YouTube channel has nothing to do with Dion, correct? No. I said some horrible things about Jewish people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went back and repeated some horrible things about the Jewish people. And yeah, I can say all kind of things about black people and white people. It's some about Jewish people and the LGBT communities you cannot say nothing about. And so this is my fourth YouTube channel getting deleted. Yeah, because it when, when it went down, a lot of people was a lot of YouTubers making videos. Oh, they were celebrating. Yeah. Yeah, 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 they were celebrating. You knew it was coming though. You you were pretty you were um you were prepared for it. You uh started you been already pushing other YouTube channels even before that one went down. Yeah. Uh and and, and I just signed a, a a lucrative streaming deal. Yeah, I just signed a, a a very lucrative streaming deal. A very lucrative. Uh with some with a with a with a big old bag up front just for signing. Uh so uh y'all yeah, gonna be streaming over there. Shout out to Culture TV. Yeah, I just signed a streaming deal with Culture TV, homie. Uh so uh yeah, yeah, yeah. So now nah, they, they can go see me over there. So I got so I'm the Aiden Ross on, on Culture TV now. Uh so yeah. In the same week. Elon Musk mentioned your name. You started a Twitter. The Twitter is going crazy. Yeah. Um, and I went and bought his book too. You went. You went and supported. Bought his book. Uh, no, nah, I, I was just walking through the through the airport and saw a big old book uh, that looked just like the one about Hitler life. It's a big old book. Uh, I said, yeah, let me grab it. If nothing else, I can read about him. I won't get him tattooed on me. 
Uh, but 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 now nah, he gave me a personal personal invite uh, over there, so I'm giving him a 30 day run. So uh, every day I wake up and I go on Twitter and I say some of the most mean, uh, hateful uh, things and rhetoric uh, from from R A P E to uh, K I L L uh, J E W. I'm sorry, I say some horrible things uh, testing uh, the free speech. Uh, I, I mean, I, I say some horrible things. Uh, some horrible things, uh, disgusting, filthy, uh, because I want to see if, if we really do still have free speech. And, and so far, they've been letting me do it. <laughs> what, uh, now, I mean, the biggest news as of late has been Tupac. Uh, the, the mystery has been solved. Um, a lot of people are looking at Vlad, you know, saying he's, he helped solve the case with Keefe D. He interviewed him like three or four times. Um, and then, you know, Keefe D mentioned who Diddy. Who, who, who said Vlad ain't saw no motherfucking case? Man, that's bullshit. Man, them people been knowing this shit. This ain't been no motherfucking mystery. It's been a mystery to who? Everybody in California, L.A. knew who killed Tupac. They had a whole war behind it. Everybody knew. It's been a mystery to who? The, the niggas who were kids like me and you who got to grow up and, and hear the stories now? Mm. Uh... This this ain't got nothing to do with solving no homie. This somebody, uh, this kind of shit make careers. Nigga, this shit, homie, they been gave that man immunity. So for him, to, he been openly talking about this. So what do they have new now, other than the fact that they try to, might want to get puffy? Vlad ain't helped them solve shit. Uh, man, that nigga been told it and taught. Uh. It's that other network where he was more loosely talking. He was really kind of tiptoeing with what he was saying with Vlad. Yeah, he had loose lips, but nigga, he was strategically speaking on Vlad. That that art of dialogue. Dialogue, yeah. That's the motherfucker he got. He went to telling too much. Mm -hmm. But nigga, homie, listen. Uh, it ain't a crime that ain't been committed that they don't know what happened and who done it. They just don't have the things that they have to, to, to solve it and prove it. Uh, I don't think they can prove it now. Yeah, yeah. I, so you don't, th you, you don't think he's going away? No. Homie, if they'll let Sammy the Bull out, this nigga, this nigga is a big time nigga, homie. See, people be, be they be saying what they saying on the internet, homie, but this nigga is a, he ain't no rooted poop. See, the internet warriors talk like he a, nah, he ain't no weenie. That nigga big dog. Homie, for him to be involved in what he involved in, and, 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 and for, for, for them to go run to him, to go against the baddest motherfuckers at, at that time, nigga, Mob James and all them nigga, they went and got him and his boys. And nigga, them nigga stood tall with him. He ain't no weenie. If he talking like this on her and he saying, say, man, Puffy, throw me a bone. You think he ain't going to get them people what they need, nigga, so he ain't got to stand in this peel line when he get old? That nigga live in a big, nice house in Vegas. That nigga live in a big, nice house in Vegas. That nigga living good. Nigga, he playing granddaddy, walking the... Nigga, you think he ain't fit to say what he need to say in exchange for his freedom? Sammy the Bull and them did it. Uh, Nicky Barnes, uh, uh, what's the nigga from American Gangster? Frank Lucas. Mm -hmm. I all love him, homie. So, nah, he he, he ain't fit to do no time. And 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 if they saw if they saw Pox, they go saw Biggie's murder too. They ain't saw yep. Biggie's murder yet. Hmm. And the detectives say they both are in correlation together. So now, nah, homie, they 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 having a way with us. They, they having a way with us. This part of the new movie, the new Pac movie, they finna come with some more shit. This part of a new documentary finna come out. Nigga, Las Vegas finna get the credit. The Las, nigga, this, everybody playing on us, homie. All this for the movies. This ain't real. How do you feel about the Diddy situation where Keefe D said uh, Diddy offered him a million dollars but never got it? Uh, well, he just talking. Uh, who go believe him? He never got the million, so he just making it up. He can't prove it. He just making it up. 
Nigga like to talk and tell stories, just making that up. It sound good. That's how you got to take this shit, my nigga. Uh, Cause he ain't got no, at this point, man, this, this hearsay. People always been side-eyeing Diddy for the longest, though. People always thought Diddy had something to do with it. He did, nigga. And, and Suge them had something to do with, 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 with Biggie. Mm -hmm. Everybody know this. What they don't know is, this wasn't no East and West Coast beef. They was all fucking each other women. Nigga, did all this was behind niggas fucking each other women. Pac fucking that bra did it. All this was behind them niggas fucking each other women, my nigga. Suge was fucking with the bra. All this, all these niggas by fucking each other women, my nigga. That was just, just, we think it's East Coast, West Coast. All this was behind niggas fucking each other women, my nigga. That's what they ain't telling us. <clears throat> So you don't think you don't think Diddy sitting somewhere nervous? You don't think he, you know? Nah. You don't think he's losing no sleep behind this? Nah. Because all this information is not new to law enforcement. Now, maybe Keefe D says something that lets them know he got some evidence at that house. But nigga, even Keefe D said I wasn't the one that killed Tupac. Orlando was. And Orlando's not here no more, so. What witness can you, what witness do you have to place him at the scene and say, yeah, I saw him do this. Suge Knight is saying, man, he ain't the shooter. Suge yeah. Knight is a victim of the crime. He's already made a public statement saying he's not the shooter. One of the niggas in the back seat said, man, it was a big yellow, I mean, in one of the cars said it was a big yellow arm that came out the window. Come on, my nigga. This fit this dog and pony show. This the new OJ trial. We have one every 10 years. Last one was when OJ went for the robbery. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, homie, they playing on us, my nigga. We got more important things to be worried about, nigga, than who parked 27 years ago. And we got so many missing kids coming up missing in places like Pennsylvania and Boston, nigga. 60 some kids come up missing and they ain't got no explanation. They got kids that were separated at the motherfucking borders, my nigga, when President Trump was president and they still ain't been relocated back to their families and they don't know where these kids at. They don't know which sex trafficking organization and got the babies. They can't tell us nothing about none of this shit, but they got us focusing on Tupac and children are just disappearing, homie. And sex trafficking has become the number one leading crime that's surpassing drugs, my nigga. Drugs used to be the number one, Ill now it's child sex trafficking. They ain't telling us about this shit. Why they telling about who killed Pac? Nigga, we don't give a fuck who killed Pac. Nigga, we curred 20 some years ago. Nigga, Pac, mama gone, all that. Nigga, we don't give a damn. So what, who, who so? It's some shit, you, nah, homie, fuck that, nigga. <clears throat> Do you remember the day, like where were you at when, cause you were the boy. You were damn near what, like 20 something? When I was Pac 19 died? years old. I was in the boys' home still. Uh, I had just gave a tour to a bunch of college students. Cause at this time, uh, I'm getting ready to age out of the facility. Uh, I was one of the, I, at that, when Pac died, I was one of the only children in, in the state of Texas who had been locked up that long in the juvenile system. So I, I was almost going on, on, on almost, what, six years in. So I almost did seven years uh, from 14 to 21. Uh, I cried when he died. You cried? Yeah, uh, because in my mind, uh, he was my idol. Uh, he, he was like a youth, youth pastor. Uh, same way like these little niggas want to ride for King Von. I wanted to ride for Pac. Uh, because of Tupac, uh, I didn't like, I've never liked Jay-Z. I've never liked Mob Deep. So I took on I took on his likings and dislikes. Just like Why why didn't you like Hov? Why didn't you like Jay-Z? Uh, because Pac didn't like him. It's just like now, homie. If you like this rapper, you're not gonna like that rapper because this rapper, uh, that's the young, impressionable mind of a child. I had a young, impressionable mind. I, Pac was impressionable upon me. So he didn't like Mob Deep. I didn't like him either. 
So I've never listened to East Coast music. I never gravitated to East Coast music because I stayed with Tupac. Only to realize it wasn't about East Coast and West Coast. Shit about fucking each other women. Do you know who the producer ATL Jacob is? I heard of him. He's yeah, yeah. He does a lot of uh, future shit. He said he said future has done more for hip hop than Tupac has. He lying. Yeah, he lying. Uh, he must didn't see that movie that they made that came out in the movie theater with Pac. Pac then Pac had people all over in other countries saying, We love you too, Pac. Future ain't got that. Uh Tupac left this earth with no children. Uh Future walking earth with a bunch of broken children. Mm. Nigga, yeah. you can't have all them many babies, nigga, not be in them baby life and think you got a hell of an influence on the culture. Nah, my nigga, you lying to me. Uh, nigga, damn, no, 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 no. Uh, he's not lyrical enough to have the kind of influence. Now, he done turn everybody out on dope. He done dope fiend the culture. But nigga, Pac, damn near single-handedly stopped gang banging. Tupac died at 25 years. He accomplished all that at 25 years old. When he died, it damn near stopped gang banging, homie. He left a void. You think so? It, he left a void. I came home in 1998. Oh, Pac died in 96, right? 96, 97? I 96. came. I came home in 1998. Gang banging was at a decline, a rapid decline. Master P stepped in. It was hard to gang bang with Master P music. It became. A, it became. Pac was talking thug life, trying to really bridge the Crippin' Blood uh, 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 elements. Nigga, after Pac, niggas really wasn't gangster gangster. It went to a hustler. Everybody went to hustling, dope selling, trapping. So nigga start talking about getting money. Nigga start drinking Moet champagne. Uh, niggas got out of dicky suits. Niggas start wearing Versace shirts. Uh, yeah. So nah, homie, that was just the effect of his death. Nigga, when he was alive, he was in movies. Oh. Hmm. Uh, Nah, a uh, uh, future don't have the charisma uh, that Pac has in front of a camera uh, to say that he has that kind of influence on, on the culture. He make good, he make good dumb nigga music. He make good dumb nigga music. Uh, but nigga, uh, future don't make no kind of music, my nigga, that make a nigga think. Pac make you think. In 27 years, you don't think nobody's going to be mentioning Future's name? Yeah, for drugs. Percocets, Molly's, uh, fentanyl. <laughs> yeah, they're going to be mentioning his name for a side rad daddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he going to be one of hip hop's most Cyrus ass daddies. Uh, when, when you tally it up, he going to be great in the music world. But nigga, when he step off stage, what he going to be? What he going to be when he step off stage? Same with DMX, my nigga. Nigga, you ain't shit to them kids. The world love you, nigga, but your kids, man, you got me fucked up. You're not, homie, 27 years. Uh, only thing future influence would be, homie, that he influenced a bunch of children uh, and poor black people. Uh, and seduced them to try new drugs. Uh, we didn't know what a Molly was till he started talking about going to Pluto. Nigga had me trying that shit one time. Yeah, nigga, I, man, fuck that shit. I don't want, man, who want to leave Earth? You didn't want to go to Pluto. Nigga, I don't, want, I don't want my mind elevated like that. Then them niggas started talking about Percocet. Nigga, I don't even know what a Percocet look like. I don't even know what a Percocet look like. Who entered, who, nigga, but that, this ain't, these ain't nigga drugs. Who introducing this nigga to this shit so he can come tell us about it? He making whole, whole songs about it. He making whole, whole songs about drugs. Uh, so, so to, to say he's more influential uh, than Tupac, 
uh, ATL Jacobs, uh, he must be on shrooms and he must be 35 and under. Yeah, ATL Jacobs, he's a little young. I think he may be in his 20s. There you go. He don't know nothing. He don't know nothing. No, nah, I mean, no, you, you got to think movies, my nigga. His, his whole, man, the man got a, 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 a double disc CD that done something that ain't nobody done yet. Uh, man, no, 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 no. I think Tupac may be the biggest rapper of all time. He is, him and Eminem. Yeah, and Eminem is because, I mean, we can both agree that he's white. Because he's white. But Tupac, I was driving through L.A., um... This had to be like a year ago, and it was just posters of Tupac everywhere for no reason. It wasn't like it was it was a celebration for anything, but it was just he's such an iconic figure. If you know Future I mean? die tomorrow, everybody else goes swerving down, he dead. Nigga, they still talking about Tupac alive. Alive. They ain't going to be saying that about Future. <laughs> they ain't going to be saying that about Future. Uh, and then just, just the fact, homie, that he came up with Machiavelli. Prior to his death, uh, the thought that he put into into that album, uh, the the concept, uh, the name changing, uh, the creativity that that that, that, that young brother had, homie. Uh, he was a poet. Uh, he was a, an actor, an artist. Uh, future just a goddamn mumbling rapper. They fuck everything. <laughs> yeah, they fuck everything he like and can't keep no bitch neither. Yeah, he can't keep no hoe. But look, you're, you're not, because I'm kind of blown away, you know, at all the things that Tupac accomplished at the age of 25. How old is Future? Damn, I'm way, I'm way off. He's 39. He's 39? Yeah, oh, damn. Yeah, we yeah, we yeah, about got to edit yeah, that yeah. out. He going to be he, mad he at me. He barking on the phone. <laughs> uh, I put four years on him. Uh, nah, 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 nah. Uh, he sold his catalog, right? His publishing for like seventy million. Uh, what if they decide to say, "Man, we don't, we we just go sit on this." What if they want to do something with his publishing and don't play his music no more? What if he do something to make them people mad? What if them people who own the publishing die, and and one of the family members come along and say, "I want to sell it to the Mexican cartel." Future don't belong to us no more. His music is somebody else's now. Uh. Nah, nigga, you can't compare to Pac, my nigga. You can't do it, homie. It ain't it ain't now rapping motherfucker, homie. Got the lyrical content, uh, the wordplay, the storytelling, uh, the the passion, the 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 for man, them niggas playing. Yeah, them niggas playing like Pac was playing gangster. Oh yeah, I did want to say this is the end of an era, man. Uh, Best Buy after the holidays, Best Buy is gonna stop selling CDs and DVDs. Good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cause boy, I swear, boy, when them hoes go to breaking up with you and calling themselves being single, them the niggas they be fucking the CD man. <laughs> yeah, the CD man and DVD man. Yeah, them hoes want to catch them old Tyler Perry movies. Yeah, yeah, them the niggas be getting, yeah. They need to stop selling that shit. Get them, make, make them niggas ass gone, sit down. I thought you probably would have been upset about that, man. Cause you, I mean, you grew up in that whole CD era. That, that's shit, that's my era too. Uh, no, nah, nigga, I'm a tape player, nigga. I grew up with tape, uh, the gray oh, screw cassette. tape. Yeah, the, the, the gray the, screw the tape. cassette player. Nigga had the whole thing with the whole cassette thing in that motherfucker. Uh, with the pictures, you open, yeah, no, nah, nigga, mm -hmm. uh, you a CD nigga. Now uh, I'm a CD nigga. Yeah, that's why I've, I've always bought bootleg CDs, uh, bootleg DVDs. I've never really purchased a real CD. I always bootleg. Uh, what good is a DVD for now? I don't see a DVD player other than the Mexicans. Nah. Uh. Uh. Yeah, yeah, nah. Nigga, they what they still selling? Uh, man, who buying? Who got a DVD player? Who got a CD player? Man, I'm not getting in the car with no nigga. And that nigga got a CD player. <laughs> man, nah, nigga. Yeah, a nigga with a CD player in his car can't stay out of jail. Can't get insurance on a car with a motherfucker CD player. Nigga, you can't. Nah, it's hard to get that motherfucker covered. Yeah, man, them things are obsolete now. Like, um, I remember a few years a few years ago, 
I told this dude because he was a rap. Well, he was trying to be a rapper and um, he was passing out CDs. And I'm like, man, you outdated. Like that shit is like niggas don't got CDs no more. He yeah, thought yeah, I was yeah. hating on them, but yeah, you was, man. You was hating on them, Sean. You don't kill no nigga dream. He's standing out there. That might have been all he had in life. That last hope. I was just trying. Nah, man. I was just trying to put him on game. Like, man, nobody's listening to your CD, bro. We can't even. They don't even have them in car players. No, in cars no more. Like, you see what I'm saying? I'm just trying to put him on game. You crushed him. Yeah, yeah. Everybody don't need to be put on game. Yeah, some leave, some leave. don't. You ain't always got to throw an alarm clock in the graveyard. Let that nigga stay there. Keep him hope alive. Sell him some hope. Yeah, some niggas right. don't need game. Some niggas need some bullshit hope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like when you in last place running track and your mama jump up and say, you can do it, baby, keep going. I used to walk off the field. Yeah, if I used to run track, I'd be in last place. My mama jump up. I'd, baby, you can do it. That's what make me quit. Yeah, she know I can't win, I quit. She know them nigga way. <laughs> yeah. So yes, no, nah, man. Some nigga you don't need to just lie to like that. No, nah, just lie to him. That's true. Yeah, some nigga need to be lied to. Uh, especially them niggas trying to rap. Yeah, lead them niggas on with a lie as long as you can. To reality hit them niggas. And it seemed like reality take a long time for them niggas to snap. Real shit. Especially a nigga rapping. It's something about that rapping nigga's brain. He think he got life at 35, 30. He think he still got, nigga, one good song that's go get him on. You can't market no 30-something-year-old rapping nigga, homie, and you ain't ready to crash out. You got to be ready to crash out. A uh, few of your partners got to be young enough to go to jail. Uh, nah, nigga, you can pass 30. Stop it. So you think that's the mark for rapping, 30 years old? Uh, really, once your brain start developing. So around 25, 26, 27, uh, it, if you don't have your gold chain, you don't have your, your, your car with the car note, uh, if you don't look like you got it, uh, stop, homie. Uh, it's, 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 the it's time to reevaluate. Uh, you can't keep doing the same thing, expecting different results. Uh, that's the definition of insanity. Nigga, you've been rapping since you've been beating on the tables in middle school. You got to high school, you got a good buzz. Uh, in your 20s, you was known in the streets for rapping. Uh, you coming up on your 30s. By now, you probably got a kid. Uh, a woman that half ass believe in you. Y'all live together. And she's supposed to rest her future on you becoming a rapper when they don't sign rappers no more. They don't sign rappers no more, my nigga. Rapping niggas ain't getting signed and getting money no more. Rapping niggas got to show up already with money. Uh, yeah, they got to already have the following, and these niggas ain't got it. Uh, it uh, yeah, no, nah, nigga, ain't nobody riding around listening to these niggas shit. They friends see, ain't doing it. They girls ain't doing it. Nobody. So why should when we? You when you tell niggas this, they always bring up two chains, cause two chains was thirty four when he popped. Uh, two chains, Titty Boy, Titty Boy met Eminem's road manager. True. Titty Boy met Eminem's road manager, little short white dude. Who been with Eminem since he started? That's where you heard Two Chain say "True." He talking about the little white dude. He really couldn't rap. She got a big booty, so I call her Big Booty. That's an elementary dumb rap. He just went and put some bad ass beats with that shit. Name another one. Two Chains had some motion too in Atlanta way before that too. Um, to give us another one, so so that's one rapper. Na name another one. It's not too many rappers not, that homie. blew up late like that. Uh, it, it's not a, it, it's not a, it's not a, it's a young man's game. It's an old man's business. It's a, it's a young man's sport, but it's an old man's business. So uh, at thirty, if, if you're in your thirties and you've been rapping for however long you've been rapping, what have you learned? Well, what have you learned when you can transition, nigga, into a role of maybe a CEO, a producer, a, a, a artist, somebody who can develop artists, a nigga who can ghostwrite? Nigga, why not help? The, so why not find your young nigga? So why not get behind? Uh, yeah, yeah. So I, I don't know, homie. Uh, I wish I could rap. 
I probably would be trying to rap at 46. I probably would. Uh, because this, this is the only rap. Rap is the only activity that you don't have to grow up in. Every, every other genre, uh, you have to be able to evolve. These niggas don't have to rebrand themselves. Uh, they don't have to come out with a new image. I mean, from the time they start to the time they leave, Jeezy still talking about dope. Uh, even Jay-Z, homie. He ain't giving us no new, new lyrics when he pop out and say something. It's still talking about when he was back. So it's the same thing. So you never have to grow. Damn, you and 2 Chainz, y'all the same age. That's crazy. He's 46 as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh. So so I, I, I'm, I'm telling people at this point now, why you want to be a rapper, nigga? It don't pay. Rapping don't pay. <laughs> Yo, when when I said that the other day, niggas was so mad. When you step back and look at niggas who've been rapping for, I'm talking about people you may personally know, people in your city, and then rapping look, don't you, pay. Most nigga got to pay to rap. If a nigga come in town, they got to pay to come perform in front of another nigga. More, more nigga, it don't pay. So it, it's just like. How many just like selling drugs now? Nigga, everybody know at this point selling drugs is a dead end street. Nigga, you ain't fit to get what you can get and get out and walk away rich. That was the biggest lie told to us. At this point in rap, nigga, we know for a fact, nigga, you niggas ain't going nowhere with your rapping. You ain't going nowhere. You ain't making no money. So why not utilize that energy to just create content. Nigga, look like the content creators make way more than rappers. Look like the Man. streamers. Look like the gamers make way more than the rap nigga. Just showing the wads of money. Shit, nigga, so I'm so... Who wants to be a rapper? Who? Other than a young, dumb, stupid kid that's angry and these lyrics is a form of <laughs> self-expression. Other than that, nigga, you're not getting mama out the hood with that shit. Go make a beat. You might make a beat and get out the hood faster. But rapping, you will not rap your way out the hood, nigga. Yeah. Yo, your advice is worse than mine. What the fuck? Get you a goddamn job, nigga. Uh, yeah. <laughs> nigga, learn coding. Yeah, nigga. Fuck is you talking about? Wait, so, I mean, anybody can make a hit. Well... And, and that's why so many people do music. I do want to say this on record because you are only one song away from a fortune. Every, all these broke motherfuckers that you're talking about right now are all one TikTok, TikTok song away from making a few million. So the hope it, it is, it does seem like it's far. It's a far fetched dream, but it's still you're that close. If they if they go over there to TikTok with a bad ass rap song and they ain't got one of them gay ass TikTok dances to go with it, you won't go nowhere. You got to have a TikTok dance to have your big hit song over there. You got to have you uh you got to have you some recent arrest, nigga, if you want your rap song to be bad. You got to have a, a murder case you just beat if you want your rap song to go. Your homeboys and them have to just got to been picked up by the feds. And, and you about to go, but you're not going to tell it, but you stay out here long enough. If you ain't got none of that, homie, you will not make it off talent anymore. You have to have I something agree. to go alongside of your talent. I agree. Got to be a story Especially to go a rapping nigga. You can't, nigga, you can't come in a rap world and say, hey, y'all, I rap good. And you rapping about doing something to a nigga, but you ain't got no ops. So now when you come in, you say, hey, man, I just want to be cool with all the rappers. You got a rapper saying, no, nah, uh, ain't none of that over here. This is not a cool player genre. Nigga, we get into it over here. We create shit over here. This because this what sells. So who wants to get in that? Because when you come, when you come into the rap world, you and all your buddies is fit to get ready to go to jail. Cause y'all got to start beefing and shooting. Your talent don't sell no more, brother. So you don't think, I mean, Drake's been in the game for 
17 years, you don't think there will never be another Drake? Somebody who could last that long in, in rap? Or does he not count because he's Jewish or because he... He don't count it, because he's Jewish and he white. Okay, so let me ask you this. What about... Uh, if Drake was black like Bernie Mac, he would have been gone. If Drake was a dark-skinned, non-good her, light-skinned nigga, if he was black and ugly, like that nigga you fought, if that nigga looked like, if Drake looked like Sauce Woody, nigga, please. They, man, they, I wouldn't give them how good that music is. They wouldn't, man, they wouldn't have damn hell now. So looks matter. Color matter. Kodak Black is dark as fuck. Didn't you hear what I said? Color matter. Not looks, color. Color. Name me one dark skinned artist. We can go from Michael to Whitney, who gets to go top those charts like that. Name me one. I, I just said it, Kodak Black. He don't top them charts like Drake. Whitney when he came out, he had, he had a, he got a few, well. Not like Whitney, no ones. listen, right, I'm tripping. You, no, you tripping. Yeah, you tripping. I'm tripping. Come uh, on, man, D nigga, didn't you just see the white glove Drake did? The symbol that he just topped the charts with the same hits as Michael Jackson. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nigga, that's legendary. Yeah, no, I'm tripping. Um, who's went number one that's been like dark? That's like black as fuck. Come on now. America still got a problem with black ass people now. <laughs> Being at the front or the face of anything. And we can't paint their face. And, and we're talking recent too, like in this in this day and age. Man, we can go from I, the time I was born to now. That's that's up there in those charts like that. I mean, Wayne Wayne is Wayne is in there. Wayne, Wayne is in the top uh, of those charts. Well, no, he he's not up there with Michael, Whitney, uh, uh, the Beatles. He's not up oh, there. Okay, oh, okay, you you're talking about that? No, okay. Yeah, Drake right. is up there with them, homie. Yeah, you yeah you're right. You you, you don't find that strange? Nothing's changed about his lyrics. He's been singing the same. There's nothing new about how he sounds. He's been having the same sound, the same tune the whole entire time. And, and let, a, let a rapper get peed on, right? Because T.I. Homeboy peed on that nigga. On Drake. Peed on him. I think I remember that. It's, it's documented. They was at a movie theater award. He was upstairs yep. peeing. Nigga peed I, on Drake. I remember that. I remember that. Drake didn't do nothing. Puff is supposed to slap him or something. Let another rapper get that. done like he's been done. And think that he can still reign. And he painting his fingernails now. And let me say this too. I don't think a black artist could be an actor and come over to rap and dominate like that. I don't think a black guy could oh, he, do that. Oh, he was an actor? Yeah, on a grassy. Degrassi, Degrassi, right? Yeah, Degrassi. What the fuck is that? It was, it's, a, it's a show. I don't, I don't know nothing about it. It must be on some, yeah, it must be on some He white. was a real actor. Well, uh, that explains it. Yeah, that explains it. Yeah, yeah, that explains it all. Yeah, yeah, he been in that world. There are so many rappers, because I'm posting this clip on the Say Cheese Instagram. It's so many artists who are going to be upset. They're going to be discouraged because of your choice of words. Who uh, gives a fuck? Them, most of them niggas don't mean nothing to nobody but their mamas. Most of them niggas that's rapping, that's going to be discouraged by these words, I'm going to say it again, don't mean nothing to nobody but their mamas. They're not a value nowhere. Them niggas don't clean up after they sell. They don't, yeah, nigga, who give a fuck about them? They need to be discouraged. They need to look at the industry. And say, man, this is some discouraging shit. I don't want to rap. I want to sing. I want to be an R&B singer. I want to play the drums. Maybe I need to go to opera. Maybe I just need to be a po do poetry. They need nigga quit. Stop rapping. Everybody, because nigga, all we can because it, it ain't nothing. It's just killing and fucking. Stop rapping. It's, it's how it is. It's killing and fucking. Even a love song. Fucking. Everybody mad. Ain't no more good love song. Uh, no, man, ain't no niggas rapping about love. LL made a whole song called I Need Love. 
lay down the jacket so you can walk over a puddle. Man, ain't man, fuck this rap. Every, they need to be discouraged. Everybody, matter of fact, if you want to rap, you have to be gay. Let's just put it on out there. If you are a rapper in today's time, you have to be gay. You have to be gay friendly. If you want to perform on stage, you have to be gay. Your buddies have to like punks. Everybody got to go gay now. Everybody. So if have you, you have you noticed all the female rappers are all ratchet? ratchet. There's no lyrical female rapper that's really like dominating in this era uh, right now. Me and most these hoes done been molested. They can't rap lyrical. Yeah, yeah, once them hoes come go to grabbing them microphones and hooping and hollering, I mean, most of them busy pussy been played in before time by family members. So they just mad and they, and they done turned to promiscuity trying to cover that shit up with that whole talk. Yeah, ain't no, yeah, 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 no, nah, that's why, uh, yeah, yeah, everybody fuck on them little rapping bitches. Yeah, 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 everybody fuck on them little hoes. That's why Blueface coming out now saying, oh man, make it that. Everybody fuck on the little rapping bitch, my nigga. And, 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 and if you ain't got the right motherfucker handling you, and, and you in the R&B world, they fuck on them too. Nigga, if you think Beyonce and them ain't got to get no pussy up to one of them Jew white boys that want to write them songs. Nigga, if you think T.I. and them, nigga, don't have when they go to them parties, nigga, everybody got to get that's their world, homie. So I'm telling I, my people, if you want to, why you want to rap, nigga? Show me a nigga you know that's making money rapping. And what, what, what's money? To, what, what money? What type of money? Any kind of money. Where these nigga doing shows at? I ain't seen it. Where these nigga doing shows at? Where? Yeah, rappers rappers don't get booked how they used to like that's eight what years, I'm eight, about, nine, homie. ten years ago. That's that's what I'm talking about. Most of these niggas is 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 is, is, is streaming live somewhere. Most of these niggas is doing what the regular people are doing, jumping online, going live. Most of these niggas getting big O's, big O's and monetize you only fans. These niggas coming to the social media platform to make money too now. They just got a little push because they got a bigger following. How can an average guy like Charleston White reach a celebrity status, homie, where these rapping niggas be talking about me? And, and how, homie? How? I came from the internet. You know why? Because, nigga, we all in the same class now. Mm -hmm. So, nigga, you ain't got to rap. Nigga, you can play rapping and run skits. Unless you want this just a hobby. And I keep telling you, nigga, you rapping for a hobby, nigga, because ain't none of you niggas getting no money, my nigga. <laughs> that's why them niggas, there ain't none of you niggas getting no money, homie. When I look at the when I look at the rap nigga that's rapping, I go look and see if he got a YouTube channel. He ain't got a big following on his YouTube channel. He don't have a monetized Facebook page. He don't have a monetized Instagram page. He don't have a monetized Twitter page. He don't even know about monetization. He in the studio putting all this money in the jewelry, clothes, and studio time. And maybe paying a car note. But these niggas ain't, man, they, they don't know how to monetize outside of that. They don't know how to brand themselves, whatever rap name they got. They don't know how to brand that motherfucker. These niggas ain't selling t-shirts. They don't have no hats. They don't have no coffee mug. Homie, they ain't got nothing but rap lyrics who nobody listen to. I got a video dropping. Nigga, they trying to pay you to drop the video because they can't get no traction where they from. They think That's if I can just get Say Cheese, nigga, get some traction where you from. I done seen plenty of niggas get a Say Cheese TV drop and get 100,000 views in a video and you never see them again. Man. I done, I've been, I sit back and I watch. So, uh, uh, I'm telling these rapping niggas, just go gay. And boy, you go, man, you go hit it big. <laughs> boy, do like, man, you see what they, man, man, I'm telling you, just go gay, my nigga. Cause most of you niggas gay anyway in the click. Just go gay. You see how they accepting the, the gay crip? You see how they accepting, uh, uh, the little, the little, uh, little speed dude, with that with Aiden. He's gay. Many with that transsexual boy. 
Him and Prime. I, th I think I seen somebody dry humping somebody. No. Yeah, Prime was dry humping that other bitch. Oh, oh, that was the guy you got into it with. My bad. Yeah, yeah. All of them been dry humping the trannies. The other boy was wrestling with the boy uh, with their shirts off in the dark, and his penis got hard. Aiden called them all out. So what I noticed is Aiden put these niggas in situations and then say, ah, and shaming these niggas. Because when he dry humped that big back boy, Aiden said, that ass shit. I'm saying, God damn, Aiden, this the same trend that you tried to put on me. Prime knew that was a boy. He knew that because we talked about it in Vegas. He knew that. But this what they do. This what they do. So uh, Aiden Im immediately turned around and shamed him, as he should have. As he should have, because he playing the big, bad, tough nigga. He just slapped the little white boy like two, three weeks ago. Hauled off and slapped the white boy that wasn't looking. So that was my problem with being around him. Why you got this nigga with you? This your porch monkey. You would do good just pushing him off to the side, letting him do his own thing. But nigga, this how he got in. However you come in, my nigga, you got to keep doing what you're doing. When you, that's however you came in. You got to keep doing it. So that's why I kept telling him, God damn, Aiden, why you trying to keep steady putting me with the gay shit? You know Unc don't like the gay shit. God damn, my nigga. Why? Because it has, it has to be an agenda. Uh, so to answer that question earlier, what's the difference between me and Dion? I didn't sell out. Hmm. Yeah, I could have. All I had to do was just accept. Even if I didn't like it, just act like it. That's all I had to do. Multi-millions. That's all I had to do. I seen Dion performing in a dress one time, I guess a couple years ago. And while he was performing, and, and this is when he's talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, while he was performing, he raised up that dress in the front. I said, God damn, Dion. Uh, I still got to look my mom in the eyes. Uh, the people who know you, when you lose your fire and that light go out, when you go back in front of them, they can look in your eyes and see that fire is out. You ain't the same person no more. Uh, yeah, that light's still on in my eyes. That's the difference. Uh, I don't want to reach the level of the Dion. I don't want $100 million. I don't want $20 million. I don't want $50 million. Nigga, I'm somewhere in between one and seven. That nigga sell them, I'm going to get two away. I think I'm getting too close to hell. Yeah, I think if you got over $5 million, you're going to hell, nigga. Yeah, I don't want no bunch of money, Sean. You said that before. You said Diddy had to, do, had to be a weird individual to make, to, to, to make that much money. Oh, uh, because, because as, you, as you're making the money, you pleasure yourself. As you're making the money, you pleasure yourself. Uh, the desires of, of your heart change, nigga. Uh, niggas just ain't greedy. They don't just want power. Uh, some niggas pervert. Uh, I ain't no nigga that go go have no bunch of threesomes. I ain't no nigga to go get in bed and have five, six, seven women just to have. It's a bunch of niggas do that, homie. Uh, uh, I don't want my dick sucked a certain way to make me reach an element of heights where it feels so good. I keep because because no, nah, I don't want to do that, nigga. I don't, I don't, I don't open Pandora's box. I'm like Granddad and them, nigga. Uh, so I know that, right? So in the in the in the pursuit of fame and fortune, uh, if you're not shining the light from within, you chasing the light. If you ain't shining the light from within, you chasing the light, and and, and in the process of chasing that light, uh. You got to do things to get closer to the light. You feel that way about anybody who makes more than 10 million? Anybody? Uh, yeah. Because there are people who seem authentic that, you know, like 50 Cent. I, I, 50 Cent speaks out about a lot of gay uh, shit. I ain't saying that they, they, might, they may or may not be gay. Uh, but nigga, you think sex the same as 10 million at, at $500? Nah, I think I think uh, um so so at some point, nigga. Uh that's why they start wanting to go to space. That's why they start 
Uh, instead of two girls, let me get seven girls. Uh, it, it start being, homie, uh, nigga, uh, instead of fucking one time a day, they fucking five different bitches a day. Mm. The hype, the hype, yeah, homie, you start to become a god on earth. So, nigga, your, your natural desires ain't the same. You don't know what you're going to desire, homie, with a hundred million. Because once you get to 10 million, you're going to fulfill everything you've ever wanted to do. But that's like saying all the athletes are gay. I ain't saying all of them. All of them damn near make more uh, than 10 million. Uh, uh, I'm saying for the most part, the average man is going to corrupt and pervert. For the most part. Uh, that's why when we see these niggas' stories, homie, and we read about them, we be saying, man, God damn. Uh, that's why when they go through divorces, uh, we hear things. Uh, come on, homie. Yeah. We looking at Will and Jada. It, it, it's, it's, that's the side of, that's the side of man, uh, that God despised. So, a nigga who like to drink, uh, when he get a hundred million dollars, nigga, he amplifies his drinking. Uh, them niggas who like to fuck, nigga, it amplifies. Uh, it, too much gonna, it, it, too much money, homie. Uh, that's why they go to those islands. That's why at some point, nigga, that shit turned sick. Because they done done everything. Everything you can imagine. So as you land in bed with this hundred million, you're thinking, what can I do now? I done done everything. You look over at this beautiful woman. Nigga, she said, you done had every beautiful woman in the world. You done been all around the world, nigga, with these hundred millions. What turns you on now? Nah, nigga, I don't want to go that high. We hear all the stories. We, 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 we speak of the Illuminati conspiracies. We, we hear things like uh, in Hollywood, there's a director's couch. If you want to get in certain movies, you have to go through the director's couch. Harvey Weinstead, nigga, he one of the baddest, biggest motherfuckers in the industry. You go to his office, he getting a shower over there. Coming out naked. Talking to you about a film. Uh... When you're in the NFL and you're in the column, you're at the Columbine, you think all them doctors ain't gay? When you stand there in them draw, boy, and he been doing this for a long time, and boy, he loves sucking at them niggas, and he stroke his fingers across your, your come on now. When you, come on now. Even if they do it in schools with school teachers, daycare centers. If you think these people don't exist, they don't exist down here with us? Nah, homie, it gets worse up there. I'm sorry, up here. Because you meet some because Boosie, homie, you, you Boosie meet turned some down people. a quarter million dollars uh to perform at a a, a, a LGBTQ uh He lying. Concert. He lying. They yeah, who he can't prove it that they that they invited him to do that. Would it why would he turn it down? Uh, I think this was a year or two ago. Man, he them, turned down two hundred fifty thousand. It'd be a bunch of gay people in his regular concert. It'd be a bunch of gay niggas at that regular concert in the crowd. Boy, if you think the gay hood punks don't love Boosie, nigga, them gay niggas be in the they love Boosie. Them gay bitches love Boosie. Them dyke hoes. But it, is is there something wrong with performing? At a at a gay concert, yeah. Would you have looked at him crazy? Yeah, like a you wouldn't wait, wait. You wouldn't do a stand up at a at a at a gay uh venue. No, fuck. I'm gonna go make. I'm gonna make a bunch of gay people laugh. If I'm gonna go, man, nah, I wouldn't do. I would at an all gay venue. Do stand up at an all gay venue. No, fuck. I'm gonna do that <laughs> for. Then I'm gay. Well, why would you be at an all gay venue? I thought we supposed to, we don't exclude nobody. Why gay people won't exclude straight people and make it an all gay venue and then they want me to come perform? Mm. They trying to fuck on me. Nah, I'm not going. That's what I'm going to be saying. I'm trying to fuck on me. I ain't going over there. I'm going to be telling myself. 
Why would they invite me to an all gay performer? Why? Why, why? Why you think? Why you think Boosie's capping though? Cause rappers cap. Yeah. <laughs> Two hundred fifty thousand. Uh, yeah, no, nah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do no stand up comedy. Uh, I feel like they picking on me. Why they pick me at all? Why I couldn't be a mixed crowd? Why I got to be all gay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, nah, I wouldn't do that. Did you see the uh, sexy red? She had a. Uh, a sex tape. Nah, that's um, yeah. I heard about it though. And dude had to kind of uh I don't want really, I don't really want to get in no details, but uh yeah, it went viral. What you mean you don't want to get in details? Nigga, tell me about it. What you mean? What kind of details you trying to leave out and you asking me about it? Tell me the details. Now I think uh I, I don't I, I <laughs> They said he had to I, spit in her pussy. That was you holding yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, her yeah, pussy yeah, yeah. was dry, her motherfucker wouldn't get she do a lot of fucking. That boy, that motherfucking fucking pussy stay dry. Yeah, yeah, she do a lot of fucking. If you listen to her song, uh, yeah, yeah, no, uh, yeah, yeah, no, she she do a lot of fucking. So that fucking pussy gonna stay dry, uh, yeah, but it's still good to go. He was still humping on it, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, she go calm still. Yeah, dry pussy calm too. It's just, yeah, she just do a lot of fucking, that's all. And uh, I mean, she recently came out as uh, she's pregnant, and she fuck raw a lot too. So I'm not surprised. Pregnant, STD, uh, all that go together when you talk how she talk. I already knew she was pregnant when she came out on stage about two weeks ago with the motherfucking me stripper heels on, uh, and and she was dragging her feet. I said, look, she got that kangaroo belly. Yeah, she letting them niggas calm in her. It's hard to keep, yeah, yeah, she, yeah, 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 yeah. Calm bucket, what I call them. Yeah, calm bucket. This her furry baby? Nah, she has one already. Oh, yeah. Uh, boy, y'all ain't seen nothing yet. Wait till she start getting pregnant and that belly start showing. Boy, she feel to be a ratchet, low down, pregnant motherfucking hoe. She gonna be worse than that Christian girl. <laughs> yeah, you know what you I, think so? uh, you, you know what the most despicable thing that I used to see? When that Christian girl was pregnant, hmm. bitch walking around with her belly showing. Who does that? Man, man, that's the, man, them bellies. Man, listen, let me, uh, I hate to say this, but men them bellies be ugly in the motherfucker. There ain't no pretty bellies to be showing. You done went from a flat stomach with a motherfucking uh, navel earring in that motherfucker to a motherfucking me basketball belly and that motherfucker be stretched with them veins in it and it, yeah now nah, man that's the most horrible ugly shit to wear them shirts with your belly showing why you pregnant don't nobody want to see a sexy pregnant woman ain't nobody even thinking about y'all nobody but a pervert and you said that uh you said that uh sexy red is going to be worse than her what uh i could be wrong but based on the lyrics, you think she gonna get better as a mother cause she pregnant? Uh, that other bitch didn't. Uh, she advocating keeping the baby from the nigga. Uh, yeah, nah, man, this little group of mamas right here is fucked up. Nah, homie, uh, she gonna be way worse, I think. Yeah, yeah she said she's gonna dress up as a tomboy uh, so her son doesn't pick up her, her, her feminine ways. That's what Krishan said. She's gonna dress up like a tomboy. So her son doesn't pick up her, her feminine ways. Uh, what does her dressing up have to do with the way she acts? She still is gonna sit down and pee. She still go do her hair. Uh, she's still gonna have the traits and the characteristics of a woman that's visibly present to a kid that's looking. So children mimic what they see. Uh, and repeat what they hear. So he just go be a gay little boy dressed up like a boy. That's all he's gonna be a gay little motherfucker dressed up like a boy, that's all. Uh, she's doing that because she's saying she don't want her son to see his father, right? The man she chose to have a baby by. Right. Uh, so rather than, rather than allowing her, uh, don't she got a brother? Mm -hmm. Don't she got a father? Yep. Uh, she got male friends. 
Yep. So rather rather than her allowing her son to connect with the males that she trusts and fuck with, she's going to play man to her son. She's going to dress up like a man so he can see a man rather than letting her let granddaddy deal with him. You still dress up like mama, but let him fuck with granddaddy. Let him fuck with uncle. He got a brother. Let him fuck with his brother. Uh, but who gets to dictate if if a man can see his child? Who who what? So the mother has all rights and all saying to say, okay, my baby can't see. This this is this is where the dysfunction started, because ultimately the child suffers. So you got women supporting this shit, right? Uh, yeah. You got a black man that's financially stable. Uh. That can take care of his child, uh, that wants to be in, in his kid's life, uh, despite what we see on the internet, uh, seems to have a pretty, pretty well-behaved son, you know, with the with the other, you know, with the other woman, uh, has a family support system. So you're gonna deprive your child. You're gonna deprive your child of access to his father, as well as Strip the black man of his rights as a father to be in his child's life for what? What's she doing all this for? Because she hurt? Because she feel like she's been misused and abused? Uh, it's a bunch of children, homie, just being raised in those same conditions. Uh, it causes depression. Uh, Suicide, it's a whole lot of kids fucked up, homie, because they got a mama like that. Uh, that's that whole mama I be talking about. Uh, I, I guess we all do it when we're young. Uh, you, work, you work against one another. As baby mama and baby daddy, you, you work against one another. Uh, for the best interest of each other's feelings separately uh, while you destroy your child's emotions. That's what, that's, what you, that's what we do, homie. Them first 10, 15 years, when we get to have a baby with a bra, that's what a nigga, you know. Uh, you work against each other. Literally, literally, you working against a person that you had a baby with. And the only person who's harmed is the child. Unless y'all two punching each other in the face, the real detriment is the child. Uh, as long as this baby been on earth, we've seen this baby more online, out in public, at the gym, uh, doing in, in music videos and, and, and all of that, right? Uh, all the while, suffering from father detachment. Because when she was pregnant, uh, most of the time she was around him. And, and when she was pregnant, uh, that baby heard his father's voice. He was still making a laugh. He was still touching on her. So that baby felt those same emotions when he, when, when he can hear his dad's voice in, in, in around. So then the voice is gone. Man, that's a, that's a detachment. So... Uh, we fucked up, homie, because we 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 clapping for this shit, and and nigga, she she's uh she's parading around uh like she proud to be a baby mama. Uh, after having what six seven abortions, she said, a baby mama. Uh, with public turmoil. What oh in, in her child's life. He ain't even in the world good, homie. And his mom and daddy hate each other in front of the world. So imagine what this kid may or may not have to go through or deal with when he go to this side of the family, what he may hear about his father, come over here with his daddy, what he may hear about his mama, when he go to school, what the other kid's parents done said. Uh, yeah, my heart goes out to the child, homie, and he knew to this world. He don't have a clue what's going on, and he didn't ask to be here. He just born into a situation 
some conditions and some circumstances that almost guarantee that he may fail in life. Think about what I'm saying, homie. He's born into a situation, some conditions and some circumstances that almost guarantees he fails in life. Look at where he's starting at. Sad situation, man. And and like you said, everything is on the internet. Uh, it's like everything, man. Like she, even when she had the baby, she was going live. Yeah, I think, like, I think, I think. Uh, if we quit laughing and playing, homie, I, I think she's suffering from post. What's that post? Uh, post postpartum, postpartum. Uh, depression. Yeah, postpartum depression. Uh, go listen to that song. She played cussing that nigga out. Uh, you know, homie, that that's just some mental health shit. Because it's a baby involved, homie, and, and nobody could think, uh, nigga, it's a baby involved, a newborn baby. So imagine the energy, nigga, that this baby absorbs. Imagine the energy, nigga, that this baby, man, this baby probably got nerve problems. He's gonna be a Prozac baby. This baby gonna need medication. Because the, it's born into turmoil. It's born into turmoil. I think it was some problems with it uh, during the pregnancy, uh, during the birth, I'm sorry. And uh, I remember on Twitter, you a video of you came up predicting that it was going to be a problem during the birth. Yeah, I'm sorry. I think you man. Were... Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't mean that. I was just being mean. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I ain't mean. Yeah, I was just being mean, man. Cause the poor little baby. Yeah, nah, man. I was, it's it's easy to say that when the motherfucker wasn't here. But man, look at that little baby, man. Man, I'm wrong with the motherfucker saying it. I pray to God that baby be healthy and it defy all odds. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nah, nigga, I was just bullshitting. Uh, like I, yeah, yeah, nah. I'm uh, my heart go out to the baby at this point. If folk for the baby got her, you know, I'm just bullshitting. But nigga, sitting back looking at this situation, nigga, I'm a daddy. Yeah, yeah, there ain't nothing laughing. Ain't nothing laughable about this. Nothing, 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 nothing. nothing. Uh, ain't nothing laughable about this. And she was smoking weed with the baby. That's a weed baby, too. That's a weed and cigarette baby. <laughs> Yo, you toast. Yeah, that's a weed and cigarette baby, too, man. That baby wants some. Yeah, 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 yeah. Man, ain't nothing. Y'all pray for the baby. Hey, but nah, did you, did you see uh, Fulio? Uh, he got shot in the foot. He did. Did you see that photo? Uh, no, nah, I ain't see it. Oh man, hold on, man. I gotta send you this. He told his grandmama the voodoo working. <laughs> you saw it? <laughs> ain't no motherfucking That's voodoo working. You lying to me. Uh, them just That's some niggas. Them just some niggas shooting them guns and can't control it. Yeah, he got shot with a rifle bullet. That's a rifle bullet. Yeah, yeah, boy, I, I, ooh, we, uh, he gonna be fucked up for about a year. Uh, his sex life would be kind of fucked up right now. That motherfucking foot with that hole in it, that motherfucker would start stinking. That mother, yeah. I man, that motherfucker gonna be stinking for about six months to a year. Nigga, that flesh healing up. Oh, man. Oh, that nigga gonna be, ooh, that nigga gonna be stinky. Ooh, that feet gonna be funky. He probably out, oh man, homie. And, and, and that nigga better be careful. Cause he don't look like he bathed regularly. Uh, he fuck around and get infection. Uh, yeah, and have to get that foot cut off. Oh man, don't say that. Uh, Why not, nigga? That. No, uh, no, he been talking uh, like he got shit. you. Uh, that's what come with that shit. It's a whole bunch of them niggas in them wheelchairs uh, like this here. Uh, no, nah, my nigga, that's a, that's a bad wound. He, man, nigga, do me like that, homie. I'm not fucking with y'all on the internet. I'm rethinking shit. That's what I asked him. I said, um, I asked him if he was gonna leave the streets, and he was just like, in that lifestyle, there's no leaving the streets. Nah, ain't no leaving the streets. You quit them. You just quit. You just quit and walk away. You ain't got to tell nobody I'm done. No, just quit and walk away. Change your life. Turn right and go straight. I, I said the same thing in our in our interview that's dropping, but he said yes. But then my mom, everybody in my family, somebody's going to catch the karma uh, or they revenge. Catch, they, it may not be me. They catching it anyway, ain't it? 
They ain't just shooting at each other. They shooting at each other, families and things too, ain't they? Yeah. They catching it anyway. They're less likely to catch it if you quit. Yeah, they're less likely to catch it if you quit. Uh, and the energy will shift to somebody else. But nigga, uh, I think some nigga was born to go to hell. Uh, he may be one of them. When I asked him in the interview, I, I, I asked him about, you know, the kids, the kids that look up to him, uh, about him being a role model. And he he kept it solid. He he knows that he's not a positive role model for kids. Yeah, yeah, I don't think no kids looking up to him. Uh, I don't think no kid look at Julio Fulio and say, when I grow up, I want to be like Julio Fulio. You'd be surprised. Uh, he too ugly. Everybody doesn't want jewelry, he not, he not, cars. He not, man, the nigga ain't handsome. Uh, motherfuckers ain't aspiring to be ugly. Uh, a little handsome boy, light, you know, good hair, uh, light brown eyes, handsome. He ain't looking at Julio Fulio saying, I want to be like him when I grow up. You lying to me. You can't make me believe that, my nigga. Hell no. <laughs> Shit, no. Nah, ain't nobody. It's, too, it's some little niggas that look like him, <laughs> ugly and black, saying, I want to grow my. Yeah, but nigga, ain't nobody in their right mind looking at Julio Fulio. How old is him? He in his 20s? Yeah, he's, he's in his. I think he's 23, 24. Uh, I know what I know what to make him leave the streets, send his ass to jail. That make all them niggas leave. Boy, when you send them niggas ass to jail and they stay gone a good 10, 12, 15 years, man, them niggas be, I mean, they leave the streets. Them niggas go to doing interviews and, 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 and saying how to, how, yeah, but they don't go back to the streets. So that's, what I, that's why I say I recommend jail and prison. Now look at this kid's foot. That right there ought to be enough to say, man, come on now, man. I'm, shit, I'm down about to lose my foot. Nigga, that nigga ain't going to be the same no more. That nigga ain't gonna have the same flexibility where he can fight on that foot, run on that foot, fuck on that foot. He ain't gonna do none of that no more. <laughs> nigga, man, that nigga got a, man. Yeah, that nigga got a sponge as a foot. You see that big ass hole in that nigga. That nigga got a sponge over there. Yeah, and that bitch, that hole too bad. That nigga finna get an infection. And tell that nigga gonna get an infection. Cause he ain't go, man, no, nah, my nigga. Uh, yeah, just the group here, son. They they will they just passing through life. They ain't gonna do nothing good, and we won't see them in heaven. They just was born, uh, cause they mama them had to have them based on who they daddies them was. Now I, I I feel sorry for this group, homie. Uh, yeah yeah. I pray my daughter don't marry none of these niggas. None of these young niggas. I hope the world been changed by the time my baby start growing up. Cause this group of young men, homie, uh, where can they lead a woman? Do do he have children? Uh, not that I know of. Uh, I noticed he made reference to his grandmother. He told his grandmother, grandmama, the voodoo working. Mm. Uh, what's what's the ideal man that you want your daughter to to date or get married to? A, a natural born man, uh, that was born a man, uh. You know what, Sean? I don't even know, my nigga. I, I mean, like, is it like a certain profession, uh, a certain... No. Uh, uh, like a, a country guy, a city guy, a, a religious guy? A, a loving guy. You're a loving and compassionate man. You're a loving and compassionate. Uh, cause mo most niggas... Uh, we ain't loving, uh, and we're not compassion. Uh, we can be nice and kind, uh, but most niggas are we're, we're selfish. We're self-centered. Uh, your father teaches you how to how to love a woman and, and, and have compassion for a woman. So if you ain't never never seen a man love your mother, where do you learn how to love a woman? Uh, watching Bill Cosby and Claire Huxtable. Uh, where do you learn? Uh, if you ain't never seen a man uh, respond to a woman on a day-to-day -day basis, then how, how do you learn? When you spend a night over your friend's house and you watch their mom and daddy for the weekend, wh where do you learn? 
Uh, so my best guess is uh, I hope that she would marry a, a loving man uh, who has compassion for her. Uh, Cause that's the kind of man I try to be. Uh, as hard as it is trying to be a man, when you ain't never even seen now. Mm. So that's why I claim nigga. Uh, Cause I ain't never seen a man. I've been watching some bullshit men uh, claiming to be men, uh, but they were hustlers and pimps, uh, woman beaters, uh, womanizer, gigolo type niggas. Uh, yeah, yeah, they they wasn't the type of nigga to hold the door open. Uh, you you learn that from from mama. Uh, grandmama, the women say, well, hold that open for them women. The, the men don't do that. When you go to the country, you know, you see a different kind of man. Yeah, you see how about all the men, come on, y'all come pick up. And you looking at them like, man, the women supposed to be doing that. Uh, we don't know, Sean. Uh, and, and, and that's, that's going to be the struggle for, for black people in the future. Because look what kind of women our women are evolving to. So, how can you love what the, what the women are becoming compared to what they used to be? Uh, this group here don't even like each other. Boys and girls don't even like each other no more. Uh, and that's scary. Did you see the, the Funny Marco interview with uh, G Herbo and Southside? Uh-uh, no, I hadn't seen it. I just keep, I keep reading about it. They broke his $30,000 watch or something. Was they Yeah, fighting? they broke his watch. It's kind of like they were... They were playing. They were. They were. Yeah. They were. They were bullying them and joking and. You oh, know. they were. I think it was. I don't. I, I don't know if they're trolling or not. But I mean, he let them. He let them. Uh. She. Yeah. 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 Motherfucker, let you do it. Then she. What? What? Yeah. You know. How can you say they wrong? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. If you let them. You let them. How you can How can you say a motherfucker wrong? Uh, a thirty thousand dollar watch. That nigga that's going on his way to jail probably would have been. I would have rushed him to jail. Which one of them fit to go to jail? G Herbo. Uh, G Herbo is allegedly going to jail. Uh, for, you didn't know for that. Fraud. I ain't know allegedly. You know that nigga fit to go to jail. Uh, I keep hearing different stories that that is going to be maybe just probation and things like that. I'm not sure. The feds giving probation. I keep hearing different things, man. Like different. I keep hearing different things. I, I don't know the trial or or the sentences coming soon, but I, I'm hearing it's not as bad as that they say on the news. So the feds get you, and they put it on the news, and you say it ain't that bad. Uh, That's what I'm hearing. I don't know yet. Well, let me just say this, Sean. Anytime the feds get you, nigga, it's something bad. Anytime the feds get you, uh, typically the feds don't get no nigga no probation mm. unless you got some information to give up. Typically, uh, it don't go from being bad to not so bad unless you done done a little cooperation, right? Mm. They normally don't let a nigga stay out on bond with the feds. And you done been in trouble before? It's your first time in trouble? No. So no, nah, man, they normally don't let you hang loose like this here and you get to go do pot. No, nah, they normally don't do that. What about like restitution? Because he didn't take, it was 140000 I think. If the feds had to put together a team, because they don't just get one motherfucker to come get you, they put together a team of people. So if we had to get these people together, take it over here to the prosecutor, take it over here to get the indictment, we had to go through a court system. And it costs money for us to do this. Man, uh, we don't want just no restitution because the feds ain't about money. They want your ass. When the feds come get you, they don't want no money. They want your ass. The money is just extra. So I'm saying uh, maybe y'all should look at his case a little more. Mm. Maybe y'all should look at his case a little more. Because when the feds come, nigga, they ain't nice and trying to work out no restitution deal unless you got something to tell us. We know you niggas is involved in something and something and something, and now we got you. Tell us something. That's how that go. So, uh, no, if you would have said a state case, yeah. But homie, not a fed case. Okay? But back to the funny Marco thing. He let them do it. Uh, 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I, I hate they done that to him, but he let them. $30,000 watch. Shit, nigga, I'm pressing charges. I mean, they said the interview was smooth until G Herbo came in there. And then G Herbo kind of hyped Southside up. And I haven't watched the full thing yet. I'm, I'm, I'm about to after this. Uh, Where's G Herbo from? Chicago? Yeah, he's from Chicago. Uh, he one of them bully niggas. You know, them Chicago niggas be bullies. They try to bully everybody. Uh, they don't. They not the kind to get along. Uh, uh, collaborate. They want you to know they from Chicago. They the baddest. Uh, they shot rack ends. Uh, we kill. Uh, nigga, and we. They they don't want you to know they regular people. They come in the bully. They want to intimidate. Uh, and they want to scare you. Uh, they don't want to make friends with people. So why would anybody even invite them people anywhere? Cause they coming with the same, all of them come with the same shit. Uh, with the intimidation, bully tactics about the Chiraki and shit. And I'm saying, nigga, uh, it ain't no Ukraine. Uh, it ain't no prison system. Uh, these states, that, these states and these cities that these nigga claim to be so bad, they making it in it. So why wouldn't why couldn't nobody else make it in it? And they not the baddest of the baddest. Uh, you don't know if you're really bad till you go to one of them USP maximum security prisons and you're not in your state. That's when you start seeing. That's when you start seeing, nigga. Man, Chicago niggas ain't really that bad when they go to Florida prison. Nigga, when they get when they come to these Texas prisons or uh, federal prison, nigga, Chicago that shit ain't that tough down here. Man, when you go to D.C., them California niggas, that shit ain't strong over there. But you don't know that because you don't get to go nowhere. So from my observation, homie, they, they like the California niggas. They try to bully everywhere they go. So when you encounter them kind of niggas, uh, you got to know how to respond to them. Uh, and Funny Marco, uh, you know, he ain't, the, he ain't the street kind of fighting kind of guy. He's a funny man. Funny Marco. So, uh, yeah, yeah, homie, you know, any, any given good content, uh, he just created a new show. So he ain't the kind of nigga to, to, to flip out and spaz out. I'm the kind of nigga to flip out and spaz out over that $30,000 watch that you nigga done broke, nigga. Uh, and I so feel that like would, you picking on That wouldn't on have worked on Charleston. Man, I feel like you picking on me. Yeah, if you go to talk, talking to me how bad your city and your town is, and y'all ain't never killed no white man in y'all town, I feel like you picking on me, my nigga. How y'all bad? And y'all just kill niggas. How y'all this and how y'all that? When the police say freeze, you niggas freeze. When the judge bailiff say all rise, all rise. How you niggas bad? <laughs> so nah, homie, so when a nigga go to talking like that to me, I go to feel like a nigga picking on me, my nigga. Cause nigga, we all in America. And nigga, I done grew up in America all my life. I ain't never seen you niggas head but a white person. You nigga won't even say, you nigga won't even say nothing mean to the Jewish people. So how y'all bad? And them motherfucking me Palestinians tearing up shit over there. Them some bad motherfuckers now. We ain't hmm. bad. Hold on, we're gonna get to that. Now, now wait, before we get to that, uh Adam 22 invited Aunt Glizzy to his show on No Jumper. Aunt Glizzy declined. Much like yourself. Uh Adam Adam invited you to the show multiple times and you was like uh, uh I'm good. I'm straight. I can't I don't trust nothing that's going on in that building. No. I think everybody gay. I think at this point uh Adam No Jumper 22 <laughs> is a free free for all uh, uh uh gay platform. I think I think I think this would be the first platform where where gangsterism and gayism go come out the closet together holding hands. I think Adam No Jumper 22 is the, is the new Caitlyn Jenner. I think he's struggling with his identity. Uh, he's trying to figure out how can he take some black dick. I think he wants some black dick. That's why he keeps them prison guys. Every guy on that podcast have been to prison. Every mm. last one of them. And everybody know them niggas who go to prison Got a thing for the white boy back. 
Everybody mm. know that. Them niggas be, them niggas go crazy over a white boy like Adam, cause his hair can grow long. So in my mind, Adam got this platform that he got a fetish for black penis. That's why he sat and watched Lena get fucked. That's why he let the other nigga fuck a house phone. Yeah, the other nigga. So when he exposed his friend house phone, which is his friend, for fucking the transsexual, he got all these other gangster crips and gangster bloods. I'm talking about some of the hardest niggas done done 20 years, 10 years, and all of them hang together. Not only that, they went and got the gay crip. Out of all the cripping in the world that's done went on, nigga ain't no other crip out of Atlanta, Oklahoma, nowhere have gone out there and been validated other than this gay dude. So man, let me tell you, homie, this is a white boy just want to fuck a nigga. And he I, just sent a, something, I just sent something to your phone. And, and he got a fetish for jailhouse niggas. So now he gangster and he talking crazy to the folks that's coming on his podcast because he got these gangster niggas that'll fight and kill and fuck for him. Now it's a, it's a video going around of his wife, Lena the Plug, and uh, you see Crip Mac. I don't know the other four guys, but they're with his wife and it's going viral. I told you. I ain't seen it before I told you. <laughs> I, man, I know, man, I, it ain't me. Yeah, it ain't me. It's whatever spirit in me that's just making observations. Uh, homie, these ain't nothing but some freaky folk. These some freaky white people, homie. Uh, yeah, yeah, this is a white boy like watching his, man, yeah, yeah, you got to have a different kind of wherewithal to sit there and calmly uh, watch your woman take a large dick and she's enjoying it. She's moaning, she's moving, and you sitting there with your leg crawl, calmly watching it. Man, I'll be, I'll, be, I'll be like a goddamn football game. Man, I'll be jumping up like a motherfucker. Like, man, oh, I'll, be, oh, I'll, be, I'll be going through it. But, but for him, homie, but for him to do this, and every nigga that he got on that motherfucking podcast, Crip Mac, I always talking about fucking a bitch in the ass. He always talking about fucking a girl in the ass. The other niggas, homie, these niggas ready, man, I, 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 I wouldn't dare go. Uh, because what, what other substance do, do that platform offer other than gangster and gays? What, what other, what, what, it, it, it has nothing else. It, it has nothing else to offer our, our community, our culture, other than gang members uh, and street guys on there talking street guys and gay shit. So why would me, a nigga that want to be funny, uh, that don't indulge in gay shit, go over there and talk to Adam No Jumper? For what? And I think he'll Really? Yeah, and, and, and he done been accused of, of messing with underage girls. He done, he done had some, some uh, I've had some disparaging remarks, but uh, he, he had some disparaging allegations. Hmm. Now, I say a bunch of crazy shit, but nigga, in all my years of working with kids, homie, uh, in the schools, in the, nigga, I ain't never been accused of nothing sexual with no woman, no nothing. And nigga could have been fucking all the hood mamas, nigga. Nigga could have been fucking all the hood mamas, my nigga. But never, because I wanted to maintain a, a, a certain type of character uh, uh, in my village. In my village. So, uh, nah, my nigga, so to, to, to go sit down with a white boy like that nigga, and I ain't got no smut on my name for it, no sexual allegations, no inappropriate behavior with no woman or nothing like that, homie, and he has all that, uh, man, I wouldn't dare. And he tried to talk so high and mighty over there, homie, knowing he's been accused and had young girls accuse him of sex. That's how you know he'll perv. He's in the porn. He got his wife in the porn. He watches it. That's how you know he'll perv. <clears throat> yeah, I don't even want to be a borderline pervert, homie, because that's a weak man to me. That's a weak man to me. And so I want to be able to walk a certain kind of way when I get around men. I want to be able to hold my head up high, nigga, and strut when I get around men. Uh, and, and, and I don't have to hold my head down in life. There's a lot of niggas got to hold their head down, my nigga. And, and Adam No Jumper 22 is one of them. 
He just hiding behind the big, big platform and the porno wife. Uh, but he really got to hold his head down in shame because he got a lot of allegations against him. Now, there's a war going on with Israel, uh, the whole Palestine situation. Um, Israel started it. Yeah, Israel started that war. I seen, you know what, you, you, because to be honest, man, I'm so busy. Uh, I didn't really know. I seen you break down the whole situation from like, you get, you damn near gave me the whole history of the whole shit. Yeah. Uh, um, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of celebs from Meek Mill, LeBron James, Floyd Mayweather, um, that's speaking out about it. I think even Floyd is sending food and a whole jet of, a, a whole care package over there. Um, but you voiced out to certain celebs like Meek Mill. You said Meek needs to worry about the kids in Philly. Uh, um, no, 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 I, I didn't say that. I said uh, the only- Oh, my, my apologies, my apologies. Uh, I said Meek, Meek compared the kids in the hood. He said, he said, I grew up seeing kids shot in the hood, which was bad, but it's nothing like watching babies get blowed up. Well, Meek, you ain't seen no motherfucking baby get blowed up. You lying, nigga. They ain't showed us not one video of a blowed up baby. So you don't run with this propaganda. This is propaganda. And you saying it's nothing like seeing babies get blowed up. What you think them bullets do, nigga, when they hit them babies? Blow their little asses up, blow off a limb, blow out a patch of meat, flesh. It's the same thing. Death is death. Right? So he go on to say some, some, some more other things. And I'm saying to myself, man, you only saying that because them white boys had you bunny hopping with, them, with, with that linen suit on with no drawers. So the only reason you saying that. White boy had you on the tennis court. Man, you know you can't wear fine linen like that, nigga. You got a nigga deal. And you around billionaire. Man, that's the only reason he doing that. And then Robert Kraft went and got him out of jail. So I'm saying to myself, okay, man, I love Floyd Mayweather to death. Man, I love that nigga to death. I fuck with LeBron. I'm saying, where are these niggas, homie? For our people. For our people. Nigga, all the motherfucking police shootings, all the black on black shootings, all the pain that black people deal with and go through in America, where I playing it? They ain't never sent one plane to now hood, nowhere. No bulletproof vest, nowhere. No, nobody, niggas. What about Tamir Rice? What about baby Tamir Rice? Not one, my nigga. So uh, everybody pull Israel. Well, let's look at this shit. They want us to believe that Israel is right all the time. They're never wrong. Where was this support nigga for Kyrie Irving? Yeah. Nigga, what was this same kind of support? Nigga, Chicago just had 53 shot. Yeah. We got a war zone in Chirac. We got a war zone in the rap world, nigga. Baby's really dying. Lil' Bibby. Tuka. Jojo. It's been going on for 10 years. Where's the plane for them? So. Why is there so much support for Israel? What make Israel so special? We don't believe in God like that. And, and what makes America come to the defense of Israel? When we're already spread it thin from the Iraq war, the war in Afghanistan. We're, we're sending, we, we, we should have sent another hundred billion dollars in aid. 90 billion to Ukraine, 10 billion to Israel. Why don't they just wipe our student loans out then? They ain't got to give us no aid. Just wipe our student loans out. 
but they can send hundreds of billions of dollars over there to a country that's oppressing another country. Israel is oppressing Palestine, homie. They went and took them people land. And I'm telling black people, who promotes more black destruction than the Jewish community by way of hip hop and entertainment? The movies that they choose to put us in don't depict us in the best light. So the narratives and the propaganda that the Jews uses in, in hip hop music and, and, and by way of hip hop movies and videos is the same exact things that Hitler used to start the destruction of the Jews. Propaganda, movies, television, music. That's how Hitler got everybody in Germany. So, okay, yeah, them Jews ain't no good. So the same thing that Hitler did to them, they are doing to us with our music. That's why King Von is so up revered amongst the Jewish population. That's why the kids were smoking on Tuca, because they had no concern for Miss Dominique, Tuca's mother, Tuca's sister, who had to be put into the mental hospital. Could they, come on, homie. Come on, homie. Nigga Drake promoted homosexuality like a motherfucker. Girls love girls where I'm from. They played that on, on, on morning radio while we took in our kids to school. Who controls the radio programming and what we hear? The Jewish community. So why would we be in such an uproar? Hey, we want to support the Jews. If you know history, you would not dare support the Jews. You would not dare support the Jews if you really understood history and what's going on with this conflict. America have never been right in no war. Except Pearl Harbor. We haven't been right in no war other than Pearl Harbor. And that's because we was attacked. America has been at war for almost 300 years, at least 274 years. We have not not been at war. So we just came out of a hectic war, homie. That motherfucking Iraqi war did a number on our country. Not to mention the Afghanistan war. We lost. We was ran out of Afghanistan. They gave us an ultimatum, y'all better be gone, and we ran. Af we left Afghanistan, homie. Not only did we run out of there with our army and soldiers, we left tri trillions, billions of dollars worth of military equipment that now these people got and can use against us. So now we done joined in into the Russian and the Ukrainian war. They, don't, they can't forgive our student loans. Think about how much money uh, they done sent in aid just to Ukraine alone. That go our reparation. How can we have so much care and concern for for people overseas, uh, nigga ain't got no concern for black people. So, nah, homie, uh, I stand with Palestine because I know the truth. Uh, and I don't never wanna, I don't never wanna, I don't never wanna stand wrong knowing I'm wrong, thinking I'm right. Knowing I'm wrong. And that's what our celebrities are doing. They know they wrong, homie, thinking they right. Uh, I've been doing a lot of reports about um, teachers. A lot of teachers have been getting arrested for messing with students. Um, and it, it's, been, it's been a real thing as of late, you know. Uh, mostly females messing with a young boy. Mostly, mostly yes. Oh. Uh. And you know, teachers now have gotten younger and younger. Like yeah, back yeah, in, in our in, day, in 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 uh, in 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 they get the dress, uh, however they want to dress. There's no real dress code. No, yeah. Uh, so so uh, uh, yeah. This just the fucking generation, homie. Uh, yeah, yeah. This this just the fucking generation where uh, this is just the beginning. So you, you're gonna start seeing. Uh, this is going to become the norm. Uh, pedophilia is, is going to be introduced uh, to the world again and it's going to be accepted again because it was once accepted. 
There's nothing new up under the sun, right? Pedophilia was once accepted. You used to could marry, uh, you used to could take your 12 year old daughter and take her down away and they can go get you three cows and let her marry Mr. Mr. Brown. Uh, the, the, the breakdown of the woman, homie. See, we can recover when daddy fucked up. We can damn near recover, homie, with mothers, with mama's love and nurture and teachings and instructions. But nigga, if mama, man, the teachers, nigga, our teachers was older. Nigga, we wasn't even turned on by our teachers. Exactly. Uh, you're, most teachers, homie, under 25, nigga don't need to be teaching. You should be, you should be if you're going to be teaching under 25, you need to be fucking with elementary, kindergarten. Because if, even in the middle school, y'all like the same music. Man, uh, it, it, it's not... It's not just in the schools. Uh, it's in the correctional facilities. Uh, you just see the young, you just see the nigga had his school teacher come help him break out of jail. Yep. Man, New Orleans man. kid. Boy, these young niggas, say, boy, these young niggas must can good. She took, <laughs> she took him all the way to Houston. Man, these young niggas must, man, listen, man, back in my, for a nigga to get a school teacher, for one, you got to have a good conversation. Then, nigga, what nigga know how to good to get a grown woman to get this bitch? Man, come on, homie. Nigga, I could, no, nigga, no. Who, been, who done showed you how to this good, boy, where you can get this grown woman? A nigga who been exposed to sexual things early. Mm-hmm. Whether that's the perverted uncle with the porno magazines, the porno movies, the porno DVDs, he leave them out so you get to see the front cover on them. Because you're not supposed to spark that side of your brain at such an early age. You ain't supposed to see pussy. Your mama ain't supposed to let you see her titties. When you understand them titties, she's supposed to start covering up. Ass ain't supposed to be out. Nigga, little girls ain't supposed to see dick prints. But guess what, nigga? Because the world we live in, little girls see dick prints at an early age by way of the culture sagging. Mm. Whether that's her brother, her uncle, come on, man. Nigga ain't, little boy ain't supposed to see booty, but guess what? They seeing a the nigga booty by way of sagging. So it's, it's the culture, homie. It's the culture. Nigga, young teachers ain't supposed to be in that high school. Nigga, good handsome, good handsome man, nigga in his 20s, ain't supposed to be teaching in no motherfucking high school. Unless it's all boys, and then you got to watch them then. Even with the bull dagger coaches, even with the lesbian coaches, homie, you got to watch the female lesbian coach, young coaching a high school girl, the middle school. Got to watch that shit. But like I said, homie, pedophilia is being reintroduced to the world in another form, in another fashion, and it's going to be accepted again. It's going to be accepted again. Uh, that's why it's a big push in our federal government to allow 12 year olds and 11 year olds to be able to, to, to change their sex, uh, to change their gender. So uh, we just got to get ready, my nigga. It's coming. Last, last but not least, uh, last time we spoke on Money Man, um, he wasn't too pleased about what you said about selling his catalog. And I do want to say this on record too Money Man is a very, very smart individual. Like me, he owns farmland. Like he's really invested. Um, he's into crypto, which I know you're not into. Um, but and he's money very man's intelligent, ahead. brother, homie. Uh, nah, I, 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 yeah, he's very intelligent. Uh, I, I didn't see his response though. Uh, yeah, he was. He was just basically just responding. He wasn't being disrespectful, but he did respond though about you know in our in our last interview, uh, basically just saying like he's not hurting for money. Nah, I, I, I don't think he is. Uh, uh, I don't think he hurting for money. I'm just saying, uh, when 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 you look at those numbers, and I could be wrong. I, I, this is just an opinion, right? So I'm not saying this is factual. Uh, but homie, when you look at those numbers, uh, Taylor Swift them in the hundred thousands. Uh, Future sold his for seventy million. Uh, Future got a nice catalog, homie. Uh, Lil Wayne sold his catalog for what? Uh, 
It's like it was like three hundred. Yeah, 200. Uh, Tina Turner sold hers almost. A, uh, I forgot what she sold hers for. Was uh, it seventy five? Yeah, seventy. So, so you look at all of these people who've been doing this forever, uh, with 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 some big hit songs, and and maybe I'm a little older, but nigga, I don't know no top one hundred charts that Money Man and homie the Billboard charts. Uh, he he's more of a, a, a underground guy. He he's not a he's not a he, he he's not pop to to make me believe that his catalog is worth forty million. Uh, maybe he can negotiate forty million with, with whatever he has, you know, with, with his bargaining power. But just a catalog that he has as as far as an artist, uh, it's hard for me to believe that. I'm just it's hard for me to believe it. Charleston White, man, I appreciate you as always. Um, you were just in a a, a scary uh, what a uh, a scary movie. Yeah. What 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 is that like? Was it more of like is was it really like a scary movie or was it like a? Um, nah, it was it was it was a, it was a horror comedy. Horror horror, horror comedy. Uh uh uh. Let me just say uh, uh shout out to Ben Mark. Uh, shout out to NLE Chopper. Uh. Sukiana. Uh, Wasn't Kai Sinet in it as yeah, well? Yeah, Kai, Kai's in it. Uh, uh, Funny Marco. Shout out to Funny Marco. Uh, uh, ben, it, it, the movie drops uh, October 27th. Uh, Nightmare on Cottonwood, I believe the name, the name of the movie will be. Uh, I play a ghost in the movie. Uh, this is going to be our Friday. So this gonna be this this the new Friday. Uh uh we spent days filming it. Uh uh Fredo Bang, I think he in it. Uh so now nah, I mean it, it, it's it's uh I so I got my first big movie role, homie. So it's a bunch of big names in it. Uh we did a great job uh acting. Uh I had fun doing it. I got to see uh I got to see a side of uh of, of these celebrities uh, outside the, you know, kind of like the outside of their characters or their personas. Uh, we stayed up late filming, uh, so I got to be on a real movie set, makeup, costumes, uh, directors, cut. Uh, yeah, this gonna be a hit, homie. So yeah, just just the names alone in it, it this is gonna be a big hit. So, so uh, is is this the new? Is this like your new? Uh, is this the new lane that you're about to? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh and, and shout out to Trap Boy Freddy. Uh uh that that's who really threw me this alley hoop, homie. Uh yeah, a, after we did the little podcast with him, uh uh NLE chopping them had hit him up. Uh he could have easily Yeah, 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 nah, nigga. Uh he he plugged me right in. So yeah. uh y'all yeah, real impressed with uh uh NLE Chopper. I I don't know much about his music, uh, but he's a young, young visionary. Mm -hmm. Uh yeah, he uh Y'all mark my words, he the new Ice Cube for his movie right. Movie right, yeah, he, he, he the new Ice Cube. Uh, he put a hell of a cast together. And uh, yeah, Ben Mark, uh, yeah, yeah, them, them boys did their thing. So uh, I got another film uh, I'm gonna be in uh, playing like this, uh, playing like a, a crooked cop snitch kind of nigga, uh, guy by the name of Black. So I go to Phoenix, Arizona, uh, November, uh, and shoot that for a week. So I'm gonna have my own trailer, uh, my own dressing room and all that. So yeah, I'm going, yeah, I'm in the movies now, my nigga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, man, it's a lot of money in, in that, man. And I know- uh, And they just dropped, know, and they just dropped my, my, my Tubi special. So y'all got a Tubi special out, out, on, on Tubi, man. Uh, it's called uh, a, revolution, a Revolution Televised. Uh, and it's just documenting when I went back to uh, uh, Jackson, Mississippi. You know, the, they were mad at me because I had said fuck Mississippi one time. So I had to go back and face all the Jackson, Mississippians, all the GDB niggas. Uh, and, and it was a lot of love, though. So, man, check that out on Tubi. Uh, uh, and then again, man, I just signed a, a, a very lucrative uh, streaming deal uh, with, with Culture TV. So uh, it's more to come. So, yeah. Before we get out of here. If it was a zombie apocalypse, which gun would you use out of your collection? That AK. Yeah, yeah, Old Faithful. Yeah, yeah, Old Faithful. And then I got a World War II gun. That M1 Granada, yeah, that, old, that AK, that Old Faithful. <laughs> yeah, all that new shit, 
All that done. No, nigga, that AK, that old faithful. The AK, I mean, where'd you get this from? One of the gun shows or uh no, nah, no, nah, I went I went to a I went to the pawn shop and bought it. Uh the pawn yeah, shop I, be having a lot of, yeah, a lot of shit. Yeah, that's where you go. Yeah, that, and, and then they they can they can work more deals with you uh yeah. than, than the gun show. So uh for the last for the last two years I've been going to the gun shop, uh, to the pawn shop buying all my guns. 